Welcome to Plaid Chat Valorant. We've got a special guest on today, along with the all boring people of Mimi and Bala. Yippee! Boo! Oh. Boo. <laughs> but we've got MCE, MCE. Uh, uh, how, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty well, despite the deep depression of not flying to Tokyo in a couple days. But, uh, you know, overall, like, break is nice. Uh, getting to reset is really good, so... Yeah, I felt bad, honestly, about even intro on you there. And like, I was like, how are you doing? Oh, well, probably not that great. A lot better That's than I was started. a week ago, if I'm being honest. So Yeah, I mean, the way in which you lost was tragically close as well. Like the OT game. That's the kind of stuff that will keep you up at night. I'm sure. <gasps> not even. Map 2 is no? worse than the OT oh, game. Oh, right. Yep. Crash is running around with the sheriff. Well, not even. Just 4v3 on a pistol round sliding into door because we wanted one uh, resight. That's the one that kills despair mm. <laughs> yeah okay i haven't, but... I haven't watched the matchback i can i can go round for round right now like in my head so let's let's not let's you know moving on what's the what's the first thing yeah. on the agenda hey first thing is we're gonna go through every round of cloud nine versus <laughs> not, surprise not. this was actually just something to make you feel terrible <laughs> yeah no, th no thank you for joining us we're gonna go through a, a big tokyo session today we're gonna do a preview of a bunch of random stuff heading into tokyo We've been scouting out in the fields, tilling top 10 lists and growing the crops, growing the fertile feeds of disagreement in the community, basically. We want to prod the bear and make people very angry. So we're going to leave all the great players off the top 10 lists, I'm sure. Today, we're do a, the a power rankings and stuff. top 10 list of all time <laughs> coming to you live, Plachad Valorant. I think it's actually going to be goated. I think top 10 lists... Did you find it difficult for this? Us changing from top 10 to top 20 was the most troll thing we could do. The top 20 was already fucking impossible to- <laughs> <laughs> You did it! Oh, we knew it would be me. Wait, wait, that, wait, that means, okay, that means all of us can swear, right? I'll turn the, no. I'll turn the timer off on my phone then. We made no, it, no, no, by no. the way, by the way, does anyone have guesses of how long we made it? <laughs> I reckon that was minute two 30. minutes. Minute 45. That, that was, what was it? two minutes and 20 seconds so we yeah. almost made it that i mean that's <laughs> terrible that's not even halfway mimi and you absolutely <laughs> you know messed it up empty empty but hey, yeah it was, it was impossible NT. it was no it was a nice try i'm giving myself what were you that. gonna say about the top 20. i don't even remember it, it, the top 20 we already were leaving it, it, tons of good players off at masters events and now we've chopped it down to 10 and it's even it's just it, it's physically impossible why didn't we just do a top 60 for this mm. one <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea that's really smart that's a great idea every sixth um, player is molding <laughs> uh, we've also just got some like random not random like just varied general interesting valorant news to kick things off so to start with i wanted to hit the valorant video that was hinting at the new wait, agent. wait, wait. So, we gotta back up we have some serious issues with our youtube channel oh, you're skipping right over we do sorry first of all some housekeeping right for starters <laughs> okay <laughs> We, for the first time ever, are going to have to revoke a Wyatt's Weekly Award. Dust Marin. This is big news, horrendous drama. We gave the Valorant, we gave the Wyatt's Weekly Award for Platchat Valorant to the Gloucester Cheese Rolling Competition. I don't know why we did that. I wasn't on the show. It. I don't think it did. And they immediately copyright struck us. For the first time ever, they have not only just copyright struck us, but like challenged it so far that the video is going to get taken down unless we <laughs> unless we undo the appeal and say yes cheese lords you rule the world you have the rights to everything go, go dairy companies we've just been rolled we've been dominated so gloucester cheese Ooh. rolling company and because mimi's already done it fuck you <laughs> fuck you gloucester <laughs> cheese rolling company all right <laughs> what do you mean you're acting like there's like like big cheese is taking down our video. Well, it was, somebody it was, had it was to. It was the media company who did it. It wasn't big cheese. The, uh, cheese rolling is for affiliated. the people. It's all the it's the media companies who are taking the people's cheese and turning it into a commodity. Somehow You've Wisconsin is behind this. <laughs> yeah, I, did I think so. I did it. It's an inside job. Wait, then it's your fault, Mimi. Why did you strike us? <laughs> no, guys, guys. Up. It was it? It was. Uh, it was Achilles. He, he, he's in charge of big cheese in Wisconsin. Not Achilles. <laughs> fuck. Uh, Paper thin. Paper thin is in charge of big cheese. Just dropping the, le the dropping the f bombs left, right, and center to start the show, aren't you, Mimi? Yeah. Uh, all right, Valorant video. It was happy birthday, by the way, to all the Valorant community. 
I didn't even realize that it was like was uh, the birthday born. on the second of June. Three years ago, yeah. Yeah, Yay. we've all turned three years old. We're starting to understand that we're sentient humans with a place <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I just got yeah, object permanent. You know, Mimi literally called my my daughter non sentient. Let's not talk about this. <laughs> she said, "Is your baby sentient yet?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "It's hard to think a child is like if they can't have a conversation with you. Are they like what? What makes sense? Like, I'm gonna, so I have people, bad. I have bad news for you, Mimi. By that definition, there's a lot of pro Valorant players that aren't sentient." <laughs> I was going to say, by your definition, anyone who speaks a different language, you struggle to think of a sentient. No, anyone who can't speak, speak you think a of a language. sentient. I mean, maybe, I, I don't anyone think Anyone with learning difficulties, is... you think of as no, not no, sentient. No, like, no, no, a, no, 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 no. That's a really that, terrible uh, definition. Oh, we are taking this, we are taking this way out of context. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just I struggle sip my to... Coffee. Th I, 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 Art and I hate, I hate that we've done this. I hate <laughs> you, that we've done this. I, I just haven't ever just been exposed to children. You just didn't think baby. You haven't been exposed to... Oh, that what? in some sense is even weirder. What do you mean? Why is that funny? I haven't spent time They're around just kids. They're gaslighting you at this point. Uh, That's not I don't know incredible. How they, I, I don't know how they work. I, I can like have a conversation with you. Guys, uh, this isn't that absurd. You're the closest to a child out of all of us, and you have so quickly forgotten what it's like, apparently. <laughs> do you remember what it's like? Who's going to remember what it was like as a child? Yeah, I remember, I remember what it was like I remember not having any real thoughts. All right, so the Valorant video. Okay, so <laughs> the, it was like a hint. They talked about like, oh, well done for all playing Premiere. Wasn't that cool? And talked about some other stuff coming up and said that they were going to uh, try and make more moments happen, like releasing the Agents and Masters. So they were like hinting that they were going to do some more of that. And then they also said, ah, there's a new Sentinel and Duelist agent coming out. And here's the Sentinel agent. And what was the line? Can you wind it back and like read the subtitle out for me? Because they said like two specific things. Anna Donlan said, uh, who will stop you dead in your tracks and pull you in for a closer look. Astra I immediately two. just think Roadhog. <laughs> <laughs> like they're going to add Roadhog. And I love it. I don't know. I look at what's on the table. It looks like some form of proximity mine, like the very top center in terms of uh, like my golden eye days, the, the proximity mines in that game. That's like almost a one to one copy of what it looks like. What do you mean? The thing that's on the white map? No, 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 no. The, the top of the table opposite the of top? him. Or the, oh, the age of this thing. I see. So I didn't even look at that. Wait, holy yeah, crap. Wait. It actually does look exactly like the proximity mine. Yes. Oh. Yes. Wait, that's crazy. Honestly, I hmm. looked at this table and I thought chamber. I don't know. I just got. It I does got look like chamber. How, how funny would that be if they, they were just, just like April chamber. fucking fools? <laughs> they, like they just bring out another chamber. Like they're like, you know, it's like all the memes where it's like instead of steel, it's going to be iron coming back for like eye by power, except it's just chamber in different colored clothes. <laughs> I mean, look at it. I like it. Sleeve. I don't know. That looks French to me. No, the it's coffee, not French. The it's coffee. Not French. It's, French. it's not French. OK, so here's here's the law. The law experts have been in my chat. They've broken it down. OK. Kurt, if you can, zoom in on the left towards what looks like suspiciously a Stroop waffle, and yet it is not. It's a heart-shaped waffle, commonly found in Scandinavia, allegedly, with brown cheese on top of it, known as Brunost, <laughs> found in Norway, hence Norwegian. <laughs> this is what the lore experts are up to, by the way. They're deducing things based on the food that you can barely see in the corner. That is exceptionally impressive that someone found that. How can you see that there's brown cheese on there? Okay, what? counterpoint, what if it's just peanut butter on a waffle? <laughs> <laughs> counterpoint, oh, it it's be. an American agent. They went what to if, the, or, the IGA and got themselves some Eggo, and or, it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> or it's just syrup, and they're like, no one's going to care about this part of the thing, so we're not going to put that much effort into it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe. But also, I believe the lore experts. They mm. always know. They've always got it. Why does the thing in the middle, the like blue twine thing, it almost looks like something that launches out of a gun that like spews out strength. I just feel like it's like a, a, a net hook. launcher. Silly you mean like or a like, grapple hook? Kind of. Either that or like a net launcher. Like you just run around a corner and you just net someone. Wait, Why I did there... think it looked like fishing line. It looks yeah. like, um, it, it looks like, I mean, especially when it says pull you in, I want the new agent to just be a fisherman. Just yeah, an because... old fisherman who sits there with a with a rod and a hook, and then when they run into somebody, they get to pull them in. 
Yeah, because it's fucking baiting us to think it's going to be a good agent. <laughs> <laughs> All part of the conspiracy. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. And then the next one's a Jew list and they didn't say anything about it. I mean, I, 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 think, I think there's space in the game for a different Sentinel type agent, though. I, I think that's or the place scorpion. where... You want Scorpion? scorpion? The guy who pulls you in. Sorry, Roadhog, Scorpion. The, 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 the. Who is Scorpion? Mortal Kombat. Hello? You who ignorant. Is scorpion? Both of them. I don't guys? know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're Mortal Kombat. He hooks I... you in with a. I mean, oh my god. Okay, Kurt, anyways. Roll the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways. Like, w there's a, a trap that pulls you in? I don't know. That sounds really bad to me. I'm just terrified of that. Hmm. Well, well I mean, they already have, like, pull. They have, like, astro yeah, pull, right? Well, yeah, or, Yeah, I mean, it, they could do it something simple like that. Where well, if I like... get pulled more than two meters on the map, I'm going to rage. Okay, but what if it's like, you remember when Fade was broken and you could throw the tether above ceilings and it would, like, suspend you yes, in the air? Yes. I was, yeah. What if it's oh, that like so that? Good. Exactly. Like, what if you hit a that. trip and it, like, hilarious. Yeah. I'm I'd imagining the, the the picture of the guy at land duct taped to a ceiling playing the computer <laughs> game. No. You, you just get trapped and just stuck. <laughs> what if all the run and gun nerfs are specifically to make this guy viable so you can hook people to the ceiling and then they can't spray that, you down and one shot you anyways? That's why they nerfed the rope accuracy. It oh, all makes sense. They're genius. adding more ropes to the game. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the uh, patch then. Because, yeah, patch see, six point... Do you want to see Scorpion? I found Scorpion. Yes, yeah, so you need to introduce <laughs> Yeah, this. yeah let's sure. see Scorpion. I mean, Scorpion's New right here. This is Scorpion. Say goodbye okay. to your monetization. <laughs> yeah, this is actually... <laughs> what? But he just... That, that wasn't even... He, okay, he shoots, like, something out of his arm, and it, like, hooks somebody, and he brings them back. Or he just, just over spits here. acid and yeah, melts or apparently their entire he just midriff. Like, yeah. Dude, this game <laughs> is okay. brutal. He's a Holy shit. shit. I oh, no. Mortal this. Kombat is horribly brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that part of the big appeal? Was like it was just supposed to be really gory and kids yeah. are like, oh, it's so cool. Wait, hold um, on. I can, take a, I can take a still of this. This is what you're talking about. Like, hooking the guy in, like, by his face. Yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. They're dancing. So, Don't demonetize this. it. They're dancing. Is this the reason that you took a still of this because you think we're gonna get demonetized if we see his skull being ripped to pieces afterwards? <laughs> Don't say no, that. no, because it's gonna get real violent, <laughs> real right. fast. Okay, okay. Let's take a look at the patch rat. then instead. No, we shouldn't add junk rat. Let's move on before you give the devs any ideas. My first maybe. gold gun in Overwatch was junk rat. That says a lot about me, I think. I think it does, yeah. Um, you were saying run and gun getting nerfed. Patch 6.11 as well. Uh, they are moving different agents up and down. It's actually a fairly dramatic patch, right? I haven't looked through it in a lot of depth, but I'm sure that you we, all have if you've been We talked about like it. most of the patch because of PBE last week. So we talked right, about right. like the Viper stuff, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> patch 6.11 is things. I think the, the biggest reason we want to talk about it is because they had two more changes to the live patch that's going on today, which is... Mm. Um, they're reducing the reserve ammo on Phantom and Vandal, so you can spam a lot less. It's like two clips now to reload, and then more running gun nerfs. Um, for most weapons, I think Spectre, Vandal, Phantom, and Frenzy. Not the Stinger, not like the Judge or anything else. I don't know. Also, the Odin completely untouched. Yeah, so, Odin. Yeah, by people the way. Are, oh, I don't have enough ammo to spam a Sage. Well, I guess we're just going to start playing with Odins. Oh, for real. I, uh, yeah. I feel like this is like trying to fix something that is like an inherent issue with a lot of the maps design in this game by like solving a symptom of it. Because it's just like. is perfect. Oh, never mind. <laughs> You're right. It is perfect. But also, every site in this game feels like it has like a tiny choke point people are flooding through, and there's just so much smoke utility that you are just always going to be spamming because everything is so tight. And also, the Odin is only 300 credits more than a Vandal. The Odin is only 300 <laughs> credits more than a Vandal. It has 300 bullets still. It, ha it, it, it has three, it's, this is not going to fix it, it. We're just going to see more Odins. It also shoots through walls, and people are mad about the one map that you can do that, but there's other maps that it's really good at doing that on, and I think you're just going to see a lot more Odins than you did before. Am I mad in saying that I feel like the core issue is just the bullet tagging is a bit too strong? Because ideally, if people are, like, spamming you and you can spring out of the smoke and punish them, 
Like that would be a, a incentive to not just be spamming smokes all the time because you can get punished for it hard. But if you try and swing into somebody that's like spamming into a smoke and you accidentally get hit by one bullet, you like sluggishly come out of the smoke and you're not even wide swinging the guy and they can just adjust their crosshair and kill you. Like if, if there was less bullet tagging in the game, surely people would be swinging through smokes to try and punish mm. that spray more. I honestly don't know. I don't play the game. <laughs> 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 this, this is going to be a fun ass episode. Holy shit. Phenomenally based answer, actually, MC. That's what Leaf has been saying as well. We were talking to Leaf on the desk, and he was like, Yeah, I mean, I watch the game, I play the matches, I don't play ranked. Like, what, what are you talking about? Do you just have a the, team the of people that don't play the game? No, no, no. Everybody else does. The, the funniest part to me is Leaf, like, when the Tin Men's were a thing. Leaf saw Cooper queuing like the Tin Man's and was like, I'm going to ruin his day. The one time Leaf has played, like, because he plays every now and then on like an alt and stuff. But like the one time he actually played the game in Tin Man's, he was like, I am playing just to make sure Cooper has a bad time. <laughs> and <laughs> I really base. I will always love that about Leaf is like, it's just if he streamed, he would be Tarek straight up. He's that funny. And that talented. But he's just like, nah, I want to let other people have a career, so I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going to stream the game. I'm just going to play Diablo or, you know, whatever else. So I thought, I thought you meant, sorry, I he thought you meant Premier. that he was going to bully Cupid in order to get him back into the VOD dungeon. Like, he was mad that he was no, taking no, no. time off and playing no. 10 mans. So he was like, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't have fun in the game. So he wants to go back and review more VODs and wants no, to he, go back no, into server He just time. quite literally was like, I'm just going to shit on Cupid in the one just for 10 fun. man game for fun so to prove fun. to everyone how good I am that I could be doing this. And he joins, <laughs> he drops like 35, never seen again. He's like the avatar. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> When we finished Premiere and I tweeted like, hey, this is pretty fun. The matchmaking is pretty sick, cool system. The first reply I got was someone who just said, glad you had fun. I'm in Division 20 and I queued into Leaf. He only purchased Odin and dropped 35, <laughs> which is just <laughs> demonic. Uh, That's so funny. No, <clears throat> there was a point when the, the Brim Sims were broken, when I was on the guard, the guard guys were like, Leaf has to be stopped. He queued rank. He was just playing Brimstone in rank <laughs> with the Stinger running it down every single round and no one could stop him. Like, quite literally double stimmy, just running around with a Stinger, Wait, obliterating that, everybody. That was when the Ares was broken too. So he was just like, everybody was trying to abuse the Ares. He yeah, just he's just running them. around with a Stinger, like on Breeze. He's just like solo entry and throwing smokes, like stim down, dropping 30. Like the kid is incredibly good. <laughs> Um, I, I, I want to talk about some other, like, bits and bobs from around the community before we get into talking about the, like, Tokyo games, etc. Um, so, first of all, I wanted to talk about the, uh, weirdly, it's a bit of a tangent, but the LCS lockout. So, the LCS has had, like, a player walkout vote been happening, um, which ended up passing, I believe. I'm not an LCS fan. I don't follow League of Legends at all but wanted to bring it up to see whether you thought, you know, impact over there. I believe the issue stemmed from originally lack of, so Riot originally forced all of the organizations to field academy teams, and then they dropped that requirement, and therefore all of the teams dropped their academy teams, and now tier two just looks like a wasteland. And there's been quite a lot of conversation. Uh, I know Dazzle had tweeted about it as well, where he'd been talking about like tier two not looking that great at the moment um as you know how lengthy the off season is and the fact that you just have nothing really to play for once you're out of ascension um and orgs disappearing potentially so is anyone clued up on this mimi bala mce have you are you league of legends fans have you been following this situation <laughs> i mean i'm not a fan but i've been following pretty significantly yeah. basically uh -huh. timeline is uh lcs require or drops the requirement like you said LCS PPA, the players union, which is kind of like part LCS anyways, uh, held a vote to have all the LCS players walk off and not start the season, which was supposed to start last week. Um, and the vote passed, and now there's no LCS, right? It's like, okay, well, we're going to try to start in two weeks by talking to them, but if we don't... And by the way, all teams can use uh, anybody. doesn't matter if they're immortal ranked, anything. You guys want to feel the team, please try. Nobody was able to field the team. Nobody, like, crossed the picket line or whatever, in a sense. And now 
LCS was like, well, LCS is just going to be canceled if we can't get these teams to come back. And that means no NA teams at Worlds. And now, basically, Double Lift and other people are already starting to be like, oh, well, we'll play. Don't worry, guys. And it's just going to fuck the walkout anyways. But, um, yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I almost got to have my mid lane career started. But, you know, they couldn't find another four people to play with me. So... <laughs> Jack just walked in the office one day and he was like, guys, we need, we, we got to field something. Let it be known that MC is a scab. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just putting that one out there. He doesn't stand with the players. Yeah. yeah but he, he was ready to play. No, I think, Pudge. I think the main complaint, if I read it right, was, uh, people like the, the players association was upset because, uh, like there was no communication before this happened, I think was the biggest thing. Um, and I, I could be completely wrong, just making things up, which I'm known to. No, that's part uh, of it. Yeah, I, I think that's a huge thing. And I don't think anything, like anybody or anything will win in this situation. It's it's a pretty, pretty uh, pivotal thing that's about to happen in the esports scene in terms of players and everything. Uh, but I just, I don't see a good way this ends, like, either way, honestly. Mm. Yeah, I, I think this is kind of a turning point. Because I don't think esports has ever, any esport really that I know of, has had a strong... Players Union. Like, CSPPA was always just a joke. Uh, I don't really know of any, I don't know if, I don't think, I don't know if Overwatch did or anything else, but I don't really know of a time no. where any league based, like, esports event has had a strong Players Union. And for LCS to actually, like, start a strike and, like, have a union that's strong enough that they're actually willing to commit to that, I think is in, impressive and good. I think. Union's good. A very, very uh, nuanced take there. But I don't know if they're going to be able to get most of the demands they asked for. They were asking for things like a like a Valorant style promotion relegation system, which I think Riot already replied to is basically impossible inherently with the league system because there's like million, multi million dollar buy ins for teams to make it. So that one's never really going to happen. And I doubt we're going to see the requirement for NACL teams to come back. So I don't really know if any of these demands will actually be met. And I guess my, my thing is, like, either way, it's just kind of worrying because, like you are mentioning, players like Double Lift have already kind of, like, said, like, hey, if they actually go through with trying to, to do this, to, like, cancel CS, which obviously is very unlikely to happen and it's just kind of a threat to get people to, to break the strike, uh, people have already said that they would cross and play. So basically, like, all bargaining power that even was had, which was minimal, <laughs> yeah. is just deleted. If because yeah. Ryan knows, like, hey, if if we continue with this gamble, people are going to give up on the strike and break yeah. it. So I I don't think anything is going to come come of this, and I think we will continue to see where there just hasn't really been a players' union strong enough to actually push back and get the change that they want. Uh, but I mean, part of the thing is though, like, uh, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe that they don't get anything. Maybe the demands are too much, and they don't even get anything under the demands. No, no, even like look at i mean we almost had a similar situation in valorant already last year before the partnership system even started i think the valorant players association like really really pushed behind the scenes to get um some sort of announcement about what tier two would look like mm -hmm. and we ended up getting it like two weeks i think after some of those like pushes happened but even just that i think is something that a lot of these lcs players would be or not lcs players the academy players would be uh looking forward to because LCS traditionally has just kind of ignored the academy system. Like it's just been like something that uh, the the system and the community wanted, and so Riot's like, okay, here you go. And besides that, it it's not really a place where players farm uh, or teams farm players. It's not really a place where they bring up anybody. That doesn't happen. You just import players or find uh, them through ranked or whatever. I, I I I'm not really up to date, so I could uh, definitely well, be. I, I have to like Cloud9 has actually done a like this is this is not me because I'm on Cloud9 saying this, but like two of the most important players on Cloud9 system right now is Fudge and Blabber, and they both came from their academy system. So like there are promotions that come up, but yes, imports are still a really big thing in the LCS. So it's not like a structured like path pathway or anything like no. that though. Yeah, um, no. 
and and so for the most part, it just kind of feels like it's a league that has no real purpose or anything. But the thing is that dis despite the fact that I don't think any of these big demands are going to be met, what this strike has done is it's gotten Riot to the table. People yeah, have said that talks are productive, that, they, that Riot has been forced to respond, that they are actually having discussions. In the kind of announcement post that Riot put out, they said they put an additional 300,000 into the NACL prize pool and are like increasing revenue share to the NACL teams that are still around. Obviously, a lot of orgs dropped out with that requirement gone um but i think that still gives some money to f the the teams that are still existing in that system as free agents so i i guess the the moral of the story is i i don't think any of the big demands are going to be met but i think this is going to be productive enough to help push some change and i think that's inherently good that the players are showing that being able to have kind of collective gar bargaining and being able to actually push riot to to make agreements is really good and i hope that in valorant we can have a similarly strong players union this is literally like the first example of collective action taken by players in esports overall and i mean other than like you know call of duty doing gentlemen's agreement to not play with a certain weapon or some <laughs> shit like that like uh this is the first time i mean honestly and and teams and whole systems have been fucked over so many times i mean i'm thinking back to like esca premier teams and I don't. The, I was gonna say when we were talking about this, I could rant about this yeah. forever because I went through it. With ESCA, just got completely fucked with no notice or anything like that. It's just like, oh, we're not gonna have this league, or you're not gonna get promoted. I don't remember yeah, exactly. That's, how it we was. were we were talking about the players' association and how like, oh, they're really really good, and the Counter Strike one is known for being super super good at what they do. That is like the biggest thing. Like the Louvre agreement when that went through, the second that happened, as a player, I was like, this is going to kill tier two and tier three Counter Strike within a year. For like two years mm -hmm. and then valorant came out and it just expedited that process so it's like things like this are very concerning and like we're gonna bring up the dazzle tweet in a minute about this or we talked about it like this is warning signs going on like people are concerned about this for good reason and like i'm gonna kind of transition us into this dazzle and talking about challengers because yeah, yeah. this is really important to me that like uh, in interviews, I've been asked about this and i'm trying to push for this because like i am very concerned for the tier two scene Without a tier, like a healthy tier two scene, like things don't exist. And I'm gonna use the guard as an example of the system this year. If we had started playing in February, instead of January when we did last year, the guard would not have existed inside Valor. We would have been playing NSGs, weeklies, anything we could have, there's nothing else. Like, and then you're playing it was like one week or two weeks this year for the rest of your year in the challenger system. And like, they're, they're addressing that now with uh, relegation and things like that. But like, I still think it needs to be more. Uh, I, I am going to talk out of my ass for a second because I'm not sure if relegation is for both splits in the season or whatnot next year. Mm -hmm. But like, if it's not, that's a huge issue. Like these teams, it's June some of these teams are done for the year right now. Like in terms of big, this is like, we built up tier two, we built up like, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna support them, we're gonna do all these things. And it's like, okay, did we just forget the second half of the year? <laughs> like- And it's, it's not like these teams, by the way, are like wealthy by any means. Like all these players and teams, I mean, there's what, two free agent teams in na challengers there's a hell of a lot of free agent teams all the the rest of the places just one one okay yeah turtle troop i guess um yeah. so yeah i mean in all the other vcls it's the same thing it's it's rough and if you miss more than more than the, the what you're already missing if you're missing challengers entirely like you're not making any sort of stable living which you know sometimes that's the life of a pro player but yeah I mean, but the also the season is not for another six months, right? Like the idea of the 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 tier two. I mean, system, we say six months, we don't even know. They haven't yeah. fully announced when it starts next year. People are just assuming well, it it'll start at the, the beginning of the year. No, no one... I mean, I no. But what I mean is, as a tier two player, if you're looking to try and advance into tier one, then sure. that process begins. Like if you were going to try and trial, yeah, or yeah. if you were like a top prospect that was looking to be picked up, or something like that, then that system would start. Um, after teams had taken a bit of a break after champions, let's say like October, something around yep. that kind of time. So I, I think what's really missing is like an opportunity for the teams that don't make it to Ascension to showcase themselves in like some off-season yep. tournaments. Not like, it wouldn't necessarily be off-season, it would be like 
run simultaneously with some of the other things to show that they're still good players, even though they're not in one of these top tournaments. And then, yeah, you can have some downtime on off season when everyone's like running trials and stuff like that. I don't think that's an issue, but uh, yeah, the, yeah, it's like it's like a two three month push just to kind of October time that seems to really be missing. There, there will be some like off season stuff happening as well, but not all for TNT. Well, I mean, they're not announced yet, and I think that's a big, big, yeah, big, that's big, big issue. problem. Yeah, um, last year off season was kind of a mess, no matter what, like because partnership was happening and nobody yeah. knew what the hell team they were going to be on or whatever. So that's that's part of the reason. But the second reason is they're just number one wasn't enough, and they just weren't announced. Like we we got into December and we still didn't have like any tournaments like really <laughs> seriously announced. I mean, the yeah. G Loot thing in EU was like two weeks before it started. There was so many things and they should yeah. be announced now because we're already in June. And like, like you're saying that, like these teams have nothing to play for anymore. If they did, if they, if they knew off season tournaments, they knew which ones they were going to, then all of a sudden we're like, we're not talking about this. Yeah. Well, it's also as a, a franchise team, like when this got announced, when there were like our practice suffered, because you've got to think at the beginning, a lot of franchise teams don't play each other because there were, you know, you play each other, our rule is basically two weeks or, or two matches. Like I won't play a team within two, two to three weeks of when we play them because you don't want to give them anything they can use. So it's like at that point you have to play everyone else. And it's like when everything got done in January or whenever it was, we went from like a healthy amount of teams to a very limited amount of teams because everybody that wasn't in challengers just stopped playing the game aside from, you know, one to three teams. So yeah. it's like you might have had 30 teams before with, you know, partnership and challengers. You went from, you know, 30 or 35 to like, I don't know, what is it, like 25 maybe total? And so, mm -hmm. like, you got to keep in mind, we're playing, you know, five, six scrims a day. Some of the Latin teams might be playing more, uh, judging by what they post for. But it's like there's only so many teams you can play. Hey, don't and worry. It's we, like, got, we got you. They're Actually, booking with each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, yeah. Oh, we have to set it up. I've been told. Yeah, so it needs to happen. That's the biggest off-season event. You guys yeah, are gonna true. feel the wrath of Leaf with the Odin. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to feel that. Don't want that. With you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I but do. I think there's also a balance to be struck there as well between like too many teams taking part at the point where yeah. people can't I keep agree. up because like the European one, I, like I don't even <laughs> understand what the hell is happening over there. There's just way too many. Nobody's really paying attention to it unless you're deep into the tier two scene or yeah. deep into that like region. Um, so I think the attention that's been on the tier two North American scene has been extremely good if you got involved. So it's like there is a trade off. The more teams that end up getting involved, the less of the attention pie uh, everybody can have a slice of. Um, but yeah, there's it, it's it's early on in the Valorant life cycle, so I'm sure that the I mean we literally had Leo on and he was like hinting that there's going to be changes happening to the tier two scene. Um, I don't believe what so. the feds say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Down Down with the conspiracy authority. theory. Yeah. Uh, I just hope in the off season, because I, I think besides just the lack of tournaments last year, everything in North America was pretty much invite only or like an influencer event or something like that. There was very few or events where it's like, out. yeah, yeah oh, it was yeah, either a like gimmick a or an influencer stuff. event or invite only. Like really, what we need is, and and I think this is also a symptom of the greater like esports is running out of money and proving to be less sustainable because we used to have like during the off season like we think like 2021 nerd street would be running like 50ks or something like that but now that company is just can't pay their bills anymore because they trolled their finances <laughs> yeah. and like knights is doing challengers now and they're still putting on tournaments but it's it's not to the same extent so it's like there's just not that fill of third party tournaments that i actually thought we had a very healthy amount of in, I mean, in years prior all, all the t all the tos that were running tournaments prior to vct were all just trying to get a spot at running the actual VCT at the vct tournament. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as soon as that went out and then she got the whatever then yeah. it was just like i'm out of here you'll never see pulse invitation i mean obviously we don't it, want yeah pulse anymore, but... it's it's the same thing though with like all the sponsors i looked at one point in uh north america alone I think there was like 32 sponsored teams in North America and like coming from a different game. I can't remember a time where there were more than like, I don't know, 12 or 14. And that was a lot. And yeah, so like yeah. everybody, everybody's like, oh, Valorant franchise who are like, all this happened. No, all of these teams and orgs were just in a giant game of chicken. Like, 
burning through money being like we're the ones that's gonna make it yeah. and like that's what people don't understand and like we're gonna still see the effects of that as you know this goes on more and more and i think there needs to be a huge salary reset there needs to be like a lot of different stipulations put in place if esports is really going to survive as a whole yeah and to circle back to the discussion around uh the lcs strike the reason they are striking is because the players understand how important having a tier two ecosystem is for just, first of all, the survival of the esport, for having other teams for scrim, for having a route for talent development to come through. Tier two is uh, having a healthy tier two is like the only way that esports survive. I mean, I'm sure you can speak to this, Josh. The amount of trolling that Overwatch did with their two tier two scene definitely hurt that game in drove. So making sure that you keep a healthy system, keep reasons for orgs to be invested, keep players for your tier one teams to scrim on teams because they have events to practice for is is very, very uh, important in, in keeping an ecosystem alive. I, I think ranked is just enough. I mean, oh. ranked came from ranked. Demon one I mean, came from ranked. That's but, so true. Uh, yeah. here's, here's the annoying thing. <laughs> Ideally, yeah, like a, tier two, oh, a healthy tier two system is imperative. Name one game that has a healthy tier two system. Like there isn't a game, there isn't an esport that has like a really healthy Fortnite. 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 We love Fortnite. <laughs> right, right. But up, uh, like in terms of a team based game where you have to pay salaries to yeah, a large Fortnite. squad. Fortnite. Like, Four players. Yeah, quads. Yeah. Fortnite. Right, right. Yeah. Fortnite quads. The 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 favored <laughs> format. That noted. Plays. Noted format. Noted. Uh, yeah, Bala, you used to play quads, right? You, you could get Luke the four with box code. people like yeah, I, If I could write a blog post that says squad should be the freaking game mode, it'd be over. It's All the right. best. Well, before we turn into a Fortnite podcast, I guess let's get on to actually talking about Masters Tokyo team, shall we? <laughs> let's let's steer this ship onto what we uh, what we're discussing for the meat and potatoes of the episode. Pacific fans rejoice. We're gonna talk about Pacific. Yes. Whoa! Holy. All right, incredible grand finals sees the first ever reverse sweep in a BO5 in VCT history. DRX taken down by PaperX towards the end. Insane game. Uh, something farming, <laughs> like ridiculous farming. And yeah, DRX dethroned. I think that this is also the first time that they've lost a tournament inside their region, no? Uh, yeah. They lost his Vision Strikers, wait. Did they? Like, yeah, they lost the tournament. Did they lose a tournament the, or a the match? Turn when oh, they didn't qualify for Reiki right. Vic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Forgot about that. Forgot about that. Yeah, Huge. The Arcs is actually kind of ass. Oh, they didn't. Win yeah, they're not very good team. <laughs> not very good team. This, this was. Yeah, go on, Bala. I was just gonna say I think this was the best grand finals out of all three. I mean, the loud one was pretty fun, but didn't compare. I. It's the first three maps were just so good um to watch paper x I, to me actually is like probably one of my favorite teams to watch even though they do some bonkers crap they that's why have, they're so fun to watch yes i i guess so i guess so i used to hate it i used to be like oh this isn't fucking valorant i hate while jim no, is no. double satcheling no no no, now, no. <laughs> the, the problem is and like i hate this because like obviously paper x uh and like i don't have the best situation with each other because of what i said and what happened but like everybody's like oh they're just hold w they do all this stuff and yes they definitely overheat and they go way too far but paper x has some of the coolest little setups on maps of any team there is out there they're playing the game how they want to play the game which i respect a lot but like they're bind back when they ran the the yoru and everything yeah everybody's like oh they're just holding w it's like no they have one of the best showers controls of a team, they have one of the best long B controls of Bind as a team. The way they're doing these things, it's like, yeah, hold W, mean, funny, funny. Like, no, Paper Rex has good stuff. And then they just add a Russian cheater to the team and they just start <laughs> bombing everybody. Like, oh my God. And then he, yeah, like I, the only reason a uh, top 10 list, spoiling, I didn't put something on my top 10 list solely because he's not going to be in Tokyo. Because Maybe. it's a Tokyo I mean, they have top 10 list. They haven't said it yet, right? They've said they, that he's they not... They showed up at the airport. There's a picture of them at the airport. He's not there. I'm just yeah, assuming he's not coming. But, 
They they did say that his visa is still being processed. They're just hoping that he's going to be coming yeah, they, later he, on. It, same way Demon Ones is getting processed right now. But they right? have a buy to play off, okay, so there actually they... is more of a chance because okay. they have an extra like. Week, I do I agree guess. with you though. I don't think he's going to make it. Oh, no, he's I mean, gonna it make just it. seems no way. It just doesn't seem happening. like it. And it's right. a shame because <laughs> this is the one time that Paper X would have been able to prove that like they are a top team. Like realistically, they are a top team. They have been a top team even though they struggled at Copenhagen or it, not Copenhagen, whatever champions and champions yeah. they are a very good team and like i man i hate seeing people that hold w haha funny like yeah, no it's not even yeah. wait so what were you talking about in terms of like you said something and They're, people do what was they, that they were not when we lost at Reykjavik there were some things that happened that i didn't appreciate as a competitor when we okay. beat them at lock in i was asked a specific question and everyone's like nc is holding a grudge for like all this time it's like no i got asked the question they're like how does it feel to beat paper x knowing that they sit like you they sit you home with the guard and that's where my comment came from that i was like ah man like i really appreciated sending those fucks home right, and like, right. Okay. like and so because of that, everybody is just like, oh, my God, he hates Paper Rex. Like, this happens. Man, I tweet Kinda something about, like, I, I tweet something Rex. about, like, a cat now, and somebody is like, ha, 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 send him home. It's like, the Valorant <laughs> fan base is insane. I love you guys and appreciate it because you're just like me. But, like, let's think about some stuff instead of, like, it's the same thing we said we were like unlucky in the loud match, which and then like every single time we lose or anything, it's like, oh, they needed luck. Oh, they were just more lucky. It's like <laughs> horse <laughs> like beating it to death. Like, let's get some new material. If you guys are going to like shit talk me on Twitter and everything, like, come on, be creative at least. All right. No, this, well, this is right your now. chance to say material. something new. To give him some material. This is your opportunity. Just like, uh, just put it out there. I you have the next hour and a half. Every, yeah, everything I'm saying is for shock value. Like, <laughs> fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. I, I to take us back to this match a second, though, I feel like some important context has got to be set for people who maybe didn't tune in or something. They weren't playing with Foxy Nine. For the lower bracket final and for the grand final, DRX just decided to put Zest back in. For both games, all maps, both went to five, so they played ten maps with Zest in the pool, which means Buzz has to rotate to primary duelist. They have to rotate some other the roles around as well, depending. Maps. Yeah, yeah. Like, it makes a huge difference. And allegedly, like, you know, Lothar works with DRX, and they wouldn't tell Lothar why he asked them. Or maybe he, they did tell Lothar, but he's keeping the secret or something. But anyway, like, there's no info about it. There's no info about why they did it or what the hell was the reason. But I want your rank speculation. I want your conspiracy theories, your tinfoil hats. I why the this. fuck are they playing with Zest? I okay. love this. I have, they... I have a tinfoil. Okay. 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 I mean, it's not, it's not that tinfoil. It, it's just when, when you watch the games, he looks, he, he is way more willing to like take risks and be aggressive than Buzz is. In some of the games where, where he's on jet, there'll just be a late round where he like peaks, takes, takes a risk, something like that. It's, that is just very unbecoming of DRX. So much of their game plan Unbecoming? Still, <laughs> yes. So much of their game plan still is like, okay, we want to we wanna play these set retakes or like flood to help our anchor or do something very particular. And it seems like he takes risks outside of that that is so different than their normal style. And in my opinion, watching when they play with him, I didn't feel like they adapted super well to be able to set him up for those more... Uh, those more aggressive plays that he wanted to make and instead we're trying to kind of shove him into the system that didn't fully work for his play style so then when push came to shove and they're like these are the big games they were just kind of like ah fuck it this isn't working we have we have a player who we've played with before we're just gonna go back to it and i i, I mean that's that's my idea of it but it just doesn't really make sense because it's like if you're going to invest all this time to try and make it work and then last second change at lock-in and then invest all the time to try and make it work through the right early season and then last second change for playoffs of Pacific, like uh, at what point do you just admit that either he's not going to work for the team and you give up and you just keep playing Zest or you go the opposite direction and you're like, okay, we're struggling to implement him, but we're not going to ever fully implement him if we're subbing him in and out and we just commit to playing with him and we fix our shit. All right, counterpoint. Uh, okay. You're fucking wrong. Uh, and <laughs> what's happening is DRX is so confident. They've hardly ever lost before. These matches didn't matter, right? They were mm. already going to Tokyo. 
True. Why would they show more of stuff that they're already hiding? These guys are stupid confident that they're like, we can play stuff from two years ago and still win. <laughs> Counterpoint, they're only playing Zest so they don't actually show something that matters. So when they go to Tokyo, they just shit on everyone in group stage. <laughs> okay, like, so they, that's they the play exact opposite. Okay. Yeah. That they're like, oh, these games don't actually matter. Like, who cares? Like, oh, CD who cares maps, about like, a trophy? What, yeah. Who cares? Like, we want to win Tokyo. And mm. they're in that mindset since lock in and everything. They're starting to get closer and closer that they're like, we can probably still win this. Like, we're, we're going to have a chance. We've always beat these teams. But like, we're going to start ourselves up for success and focus on Tokyo where we can actually bring home a title that matters to us. And that's what I think potentially is happening. Okay. Counterpoint, because both none of y'all put your actual tinfoil hat on, okay? And none of these are very <laughs> tinfoil hatty at all. Okay. All right, remember, before lock-in, Zest says, what does he say? He says, we're going to play with Foxy9. Zest is not even coming to the to the arena. He's not even coming at all. He said that in multiple interviews. He said that to Yinsu. He lied, okay? Zest comes, plays entire lock-in. Now, Pacific League starts. They start playing with Foxy9. They say, Mako, and I quote, he is the best player in the world. Random rookie. Hmm, best player in the world. That doesn't really curious. make sense. Okay, curious. And they play every sing almost every single match. Sometimes they sub him out just for a little bit more secrecy, whatever. And now they sub Zest back in, and they're going to Tokyo. And the entire idea was more mind games from Stacks. They never plan to play Foxy Nine at all at Tokyo, <laughs> and he is not even going to travel to Japan, which is a boat ride away. Okay, <laughs> four mind games the entire season. How's that sound? So, okay, I can, so I can agree with this because so I one, think DRX is confident. Wait, so one theory, both theories start with DRX are hyper confident of playing mind games, but they both end in exactly the opposite place. Of one, like MCE's theory is that Foxy Nine is going to have like they're going to have crazy strats with Foxy Nine prep for Tokyo, and the other one is they were just dicking around all season with Foxy Nine. <laughs> yeah, but if they were dicking around all season, Bala, why would they not continue? For the full effect. More mind games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how just... can you, what do you, what? Does anybody know what's about to happen? Does anybody no. know? Master no, Stone goes no, a week away, four I... days until matches start. Does anybody know what's happening? Huh? I also love, <laughs> no. I also love that we're like, yeah, APAC, don't worry, we're going to talk about you guys, and then this is what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but the other APAC people don't know what's going on either, man. Yeah, like, no nobody really watches knows. APAC. We're trying, to, we're trying to, like, paint you guys in a better light so that people will be more interested. <laughs> we're building the storylines for you. Uh, you guys are too straight to the point great. on everything. Okay, uh, Platchat finally talks about Pacific. We get an NA guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I hide Paper X the whole time. Talk about don't you do that Noted Paper X hater, do that Matthew C. Elmore on the podcast. <laughs> this guy hates Paper X. That's crazy. Okay. I, I hate Yay. I hate Paper Rex. Like, I, all these narratives. It's just so much fun. I love the internet. Okay, we you have Fracture on the... Oh, yeah, go on. If you have another real theory, you okay. all the theories. Theory. Actual six-man roster, and they're just making sure that everybody has playtime on the maps, especially where Foxy9 will not play, specifically because I don't think it has like, the depth of an agent pool that he would need to run like this neon comp on Fracture and some other stuff. But then um, why not play so him like on Ascent if, when well, they play they the did, finals? Just because you need to stretch. You're, you're going to need to stretch in some instances if they do end up going in that manner. But like even if they don't run... Uh, even if they stay with the roster that they played the entire time, for example, Foxy9 just staying the entire, all seven maps, whatever, in Tokyo, it's still valuable to get Zest some playtime so he's not fucking rusty off the bench if they need to eventually. This is the only team, by the way, that's giving any sort of real practice time and not just fucking random one-off maps to their, their players who are coming in on a real six-man roster. So they're EG? like the only... Yeah, EG, EG, that's oh. it. Well, well... I mean, are they really though? Because Demon they One just did. kind of subs in the entire season. Yeah, but that. they did swap at the yeah, beginning yeah. first. And they also are proven to be like screaming properly with their six men and stuff like that, yeah. which uh, I don't think many other teams. I was clarify. I was told, and I haven't uh, verified this at all. So again, might be just speaking out of my ass here too. That um, you need to look. Am I right here, MZ? That you need to lock in a roster before you know the map pool for a game that's happening in the regular season. Like for you, example. Yes. It, you have to what is it um from what i've heard it's the night before it's i can't i think it might be the night before uh you have that to doesn't say make any like sense. you have to say like these 
people you have to like set i don't know if it's your five man or six man roster because like right. i know with the coaching thing it affects it where it's right. like uh like you can only have two people in like certain areas or things like that but like yeah you do have to turn it in ahead of time but i don't know if it's your starting five man roster right, and if right. it is the starting five man roster that's really weird because every single time they come out and they ask us any subs and it's right, like right. you should know if like we have a sub you know but yeah if <laughs> yeah I see what you uh mean. but yeah that's i've never thought about that because we haven't done it but man that's got to be and poor concerning but it can't be like that because no EG exactly did it doesn't the thing make with sense bcj like and demon one no, like you just have to be it is like apparently that. we just don't follow well then how does that work then bala because so, if you have a I six think person it's roster, like six and you can change as you want no between no no the six i remember days. specifically like getting in the weeds with this when lakia was playing at masters berlin with vision strikers they have to submit. But that was in like 1920. That was like, yeah, surely exactly. The, surely the rules have changed since then. I don't think yeah. so. I, well, nothing makes sense anyways. I don't I don't think it's but changed. They require a six player now. It's, a, it's I, different. I love how it's just becoming whose line is it anyways. Like the rules are all made up and it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah essentially. That's how Valorant has always been, man. That's how Valorant's always That's been. That's what I'm saying. You, you I, get some I, kind of punishment, they roll the dice. It's an improv punishment. They pull it out of a hat. And, oh, and, oh, seven rounds go to the other team. Put yeah, it back we can't, in. We can't talk pull about it out again. <laughs> Every single time there's been a sub, we've been like on the caster desk. They, they tell us ahead of time, okay, this map is blah 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 blah. Like, I wonder if you have to turn it in map by map. Then, yeah, it is um, map. Yeah, it's map would... by map. It's okay. map right. by so map. So, like, if we before. play Icebox, it's these five. If we play Fracture, it's these right. five. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. and that's so your maybe... theory, Bala, is that Zest, Zest, and Foxy are going to swap bait on a map by map basis when it comes to token. Uh, not necessarily, but. But yeah, I mean, there, there's that there's that one, and then there's the theory that it's just like they're making right. sure that he's ready to play in case somebody gets COVID. Like because some shit like that. They do look clearly better on Fracture, for example, with RB playing the Neon. I mean, yes. they just look so much better on RB's that map. Oh, so good that, in Neon. It's yeah. insane. It's this movement in the stuns, like, yeah, that's yeah. true. And yeah. our counterpoint, maybe they're used to playing a Neon, and they're hiding a comp, and that's why they look so much better, is they're like, oh, we're going to show part of it. Like, mm. because, yeah, they, they're very stubborn in new maps, uh, some of the time. They're, like, and they're known to potentially hide comps coming into big events, because they know they can win them. So it's like, all of these options could be a thing. Yeah, but. they're a difficult team to look at. But I also think, from what I've seen of DRX so far, like, unless they are really hiding, like, a better even awareness of how to play the meta currently... I, it's not that I'm not I'm not I don't think teams should be scared of DRX because even if they are hiding stuff the way in which they approach these execs and comps and stuff like this is lacking something compared to the other top teams I feel they're extremely execute heavy and I know that they have been like that for a while and it's it's worked for them in the past too but every round that they showed in these big games and a lot that they were doing even with Foxy9 earlier on has just been hard execs and like big pre-planned execs and then very set post-plant positions. Their post-plant positions on Fracture A are always in the same spot every time and they never move from them. They are static post-plant positions where you know where every player is roughly going to be at every point. And when they push into the sites as well, if their exec meets any level of resistance, they just try and muscle through the front door anyway compared to other teams where they'll try and bait out some utility and then go for, you know, the, the second wave of pushing into the site. Like, they, they just they just go. And I feel like that's not something that you hide in big games. You don't hide that you understand how to play Valorant. You hide, like, set strats or you hide, like, comps or something like yeah. that. But you don't, you don't hide, like, your fundamental rhythm of play. So I'm, I feel like that is still going to be an issue for DRX. Also, like... Can't win the grand finals while hiding this stuff. It kind of ends up being useless because you play groups anyways, and then all of a sudden your vods are out. <laughs> Fnatic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, except Fnatic make it to the playoffs anyway. Oh, of course, right. It's two Wait. teams. Oh yeah. So they get that opportunity. Yeah, course, I don't know. I I, I feel that. like DRX like 
when I watch them this time, it's a lot of the same stylistic stuff that it has always been, which is where I can kind of like see your theory, MC, of maybe being true of like, okay, they're just going to play their old stuff to hide whatever yeah. they're cooking up with Foxy9 to, to not do anything else. Because you, you watch their fracture from this event, and it's like the same fracture that they played at Lockin. It's like yeah, the same yeah. execs with the neon, the same, okay, we're going to flash haunt and then slide out of the neon wall off the reveal from the information. It is so formulaic, but... Part of me also thinks that when I watch some of their games with Foxy9, I still saw a lot of those same ideas. A lot of them just like trying to implement Foxy into plans that they already have. And that's where my doubt about this being a big con comes through of like, I don't know if I've seen in their games from Pacific thus far, them really showing that ability to to be more willing to pivot in the mid round, to kind of let themselves loose a little bit, which is why I liked when they played with Foxy, because I think he gave them more opportunities to like slow things down in the mid round give him an opportunity to just like on the fly flash him in somewhere and get a kill something like that it, it, it injected something a little bit new into drx which was i was a fan of yeah but so, also foxy yeah. nine doesn't like he's he's just so inexperienced like he doesn't do the things that top entry players do yes he's not as aware of but that's when if you're punished. if it's a big con to play him are you not hurting him by kind of letting him lose out on what could have he could have played 10 maps in in these games to get experience against other i don't think squads. they were intending to play 10 maps well yeah but six <laughs> maps if you if you want to 3-0 both times six yeah, maps yeah. is still a lot of practice yeah. for a guy like him under a, a higher pressure game like you would get at tokyo when he's yet to have an opportunity to play like a big stadium match yeah uh, i i want to move on to talking about paper x though and if possible Kurt, are we able to bring up some clips from uh the second map ascent because i want this this to me looks it looks like a cupid comp it looks like a crazy ass cupid comp of some wild shit now bren Bren was cooking with Harbour on Ascent a while back, and he tweeted out, Harbour on Ascent is fantastic, something like that, or Harbour on Ascent is going to be the meta. And all of the Paper X players and the Paper X coach responded to that tweet being like, bet, bet, let's do it. Like, and, and then they bring out in the grand finals this Harbour comp on Ascent where something is playing Rainer. They're playing Raise Rainer with Harbour and Viper, and they've got wacky ideas all over the place and i love it it's so crazy it's like their bind comp but they've got so much cool shit cooked up with it where like forsaken's utility is all over the place and they're like inserting him into spots so that he can get good harbor walls off they're just so unique with the way that they think about the game it, it is their bind comp right <laughs> it's exactly the same no bind. they play by they play brim on bind instead oh, yeah, of yeah, viper yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. which is again bizarre but yeah that's what they do <laughs> You have a stim beacon. Why wouldn't they? Right, exactly. I actually, Most I kind of thought the, I, I the bind was kind of sick. They had like really cool entry pathing where they would like do like a weird ass wall, like when they're doing their A exec, that would like cut from like triple to like section off showers. And then they would do like the back site smokes and like flip the map. They just had some weird shit cooked up with that comp that was so cool to watch. But that's uh, what you're saying earlier, MC, where they just have really cool little things. Like their execs on this map, where they're like combining a sky flash with a rain allure with like Jing scaling off of a cascade. There's a a lot of little things like that where like i think you could probably no. do do better in this comp with maybe out the rain up but they have ideas with it like it actually has merit with the stuff they're cooking no i think this is paper x they don't throw you to they run it down i don't know what you guys oh, are talking no. about <laughs> this My is bad. Uh, uh, like no it's and this is the exact thing i'm talking about like you play this where are you ever going to practice against this yeah never. like that in is the, the big finals, thing actually. when we're at break of <laughs> yeah. it yeah in the grand finals you're like okay well at least we got reps against it so if we run into them again <laughs> like we're fine but like all these other teams like how do you even prepare for this like and they're doing things that you don't understand like a lot of people try to copy what better teams do they run these execs they run these takes but they don't understand the thought process of why it's successful so it's like you can practice against these things but it's like one of the triggers of a strat or a take might be a certain player in a certain area. And unless you figure that out, you can't truly practice against this. You can be somewhat prepared, but like, that's why these comps work and like these unique comps that are slightly different are so good to play because how Cupert and I look at the game is if you're playing a meta comp, you play against a meta comp all the time. If you make a comp, you get the benefit of practicing against what you're probably going to play in a meta comp constantly. 
Yeah. When you get in a match, the team you're playing on a meta comp, you're ready for everything they can do. They have no idea what you're going to do. Like, because they've never played it before. So it's yeah. like these comps and the way Paper X thinks is just so unique that, like, it's just, it's so nice. Like, it's a refreshing, you know, look at the game. But sometimes they just overheat and go way too crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, there is no argument about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they don't have the most discipline in the world, but they do like to... The, what I really appreciate as well is they don't just stick to set plays. Like, we're talking about it almost as if a lot of things are drafted up and they run them as if they're like big executes. But it's it's a bit more nuanced than that. It's like small combos of utility, right? It's like, if we're in this situation, we combo the Flash with the Leah. Or if we're yeah. in this situation, we use the Cove to get ourselves out of a choke point or something. And then they can build those building blocks of small utility combos up so that they can improv with it. So yeah. it feels like it might be a set play. And some of them are set at the beginning of the round, but some of them are just them improv on the fly with all of these different pieces. Paper X is jazz. But they've already built some stuff. Paper X is <laughs> jazz, I like that. They, they have a little, bunch of little chords, little ideas, but it's all freestyle to, to put it together on the fly, which makes it hard to hard to repeat, hard to play against. Also, I, I, I wanted to kind of bring up the idea of just like Forsaken as an individual and like the changes he's made to fit into this roster now with something. Yeah. Going from like playing like Yoru and being their like perma entry with Jing to now switching to like playing a bazillion different roles. And he's I feel like he's still played so well on them. He's still putting up crazy numbers. Um, from my understanding with Ben Kai gone, it's been mostly him with like some Devai of bringing ideas in the mid round. His harbor, it, it looks like Jojimo on steroids. He's using his cove as a Thunderdome every round to scale into sight and do ridiculous stuff. It's just really cool to watch that they can have the flexibility to try these new comps and they can understand how to do the little things on the fly while still just having silliness like, okay, this round Rain is yeah, just going to yeah. push CT for no reason. We're in a 5v2. No reason to do this. Whatever. Might as well get the kill. Cool. Oh, yeah, all good. Counterpoint, good. you win every gunfight. Yeah. yeah something exactly. something is cheating, by the way. That's why yeah. I can't come to Japan. That's why you can't come to Japan. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, he managed to cheat on land in Pacific, but that's because they don't, <laughs> they they don't, don't pay care. attention to that kind of stuff. The yeah. Japanese yeah. government are very, they have very thorough immigration policies. When you apply for the sports visa, they actually check your PC, uh, and that's why you couldn't get one. Uh, <laughs> also, bigger, bigger conspiracy about Tokyo. Adderall is a banned substance in Japan. Oh, so that, I'm going to, let's, let's <laughs> crucify, go ahead, crucify go ahead, go ahead. every player that has even slightly different numbers at this land. That's and a good we, idea. We overanalyze and we're like, they have to be abusing. Right. <laughs> and it's not that they actually have ADD, which is really common among gamers. It's that they are abusing as well. Yes. yes. Obviously, that should be the, the first thing you think of, clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the, the, other, the other part to the Forsaken thing, too, is that prior to this, he was just playing Jet and Yoru, and it looked awful. I mean, that was part of the reason why Paper X looked so dre dreadful at the beginning of the season is because they were just playing like Jet Rainer comps where they didn't have any cool ideas. They were just like, it did actually feel like uh, they, they, when they run the Yoru comps, they always had something cool going on. But yeah. when they run the Jet Rainer, it just felt like Forsaken was given the hard entry role and then Jing would run around and try and get kills. And it, there was none of this interesting stuff happening and they really lacked a flex player he turned into like a pretty passive player i think after copenhagen in, in in general whereas before that he was like just kind of wild like the rest of paper x like jing like they were like this one two punch combo but after that he turned into really really like not so much passive but like especially when you watch this yori like he's often just uh, on defense throwing his rotate tps rather than like the aggressive ones that you saw on bind last year at copenhagen which is odd but yeah, I, I think you, you still have that possibility of him going back to playing that. In some cases, probably not because you have too many too many duelists at that point. But it's still in the toolkit, which is a nice threat. I think, though... He plays Neon still for their Fracture. True. On Fracture, he looked insane on that, too. Like, probably yeah. my favorite out of all of them. I, I think the, the thing I love about specifically his Harbor, but some of the other stuff, too, is that he's just so much more unconventional than the rest of, you know, the Harbor players and stuff yeah. like that. Like. You, you watch you watch on, uh, on on ascent which obviously nobody's playing harbor on but he'll use he'll spam on defense all of his util just to take some map control and just hard rotate and nobody else is doing that sort of thing and he's thunder doming with his high tide 
just constantly and he somehow yeah. has his cooldown up like perfectly for the execute yeah. when nobody else is able to like get that sort of thing off the rest of the harbors during default high tides to his nice mid wall on pearl defense you know <laughs> one that covers art one that covers a main double doors always the exact same one that has the perfect gaps here and there you forsaken just like he's just fucking, <laughs> fucking <spinning laughs> <around. laughs> like yeah. No, <laughs> I will. We when Harbor first came out, uh, back with our old roster, we ran it as a solo control because I like chaos. Yeah, um, that ain't gonna work. And we actually I ran. That was gonna be meta. We ran Reina Harbor uh, at the beginning, and I think Harbor complements Reina really well because one of the problems with Reina is taking good fights or getting in places where you're you matter. And so, what does the Cascade do? What do these things do? It creates pockets that you can make your fights more selective. And I think that's something that's overlooked, but like we did it when there was only one cascade. So like we were just psychos, but like- Dude, I forgot he used to vanity, have one cascade. Vanity, it was yeah. the funniest thing, what Bala just did. Vanity was a fantastic harbor because he didn't know what he was gonna do. And I feel like that's <laughs> forsaken in a nutshell. He's just like, Vanity, if he's getting an exec on, literally hits his DP up, dpi button does the most perfect circle and he's like come at me bro like <laughs> you know and it our defense sides were incredible and on a map like ascent they're creating these fights you're not used to taking where all of a sudden the biggest thing about harbor your util doesn't work where it's like oh this recon is the best recon we can throw oh surprise there's a cascade there's a high tide there's something where like you can't clear what you need to clear anymore and so, like, this is a really interesting comp that I think you might see more and more teams play. And they should have won this, by the way, except Buzz yeah. was an animal on this map and just, I think he dropped, like, over 35 kills. What, what did he have at the end of this one? I think 35. Was... Not enough. Oh, was it literally 35? It was enough. <laughs> yeah. no. he, I, he I think of that round where he's amount. just anchoring B and just kills four players on, on, on the, the exit, where someone's, yeah. like, double satcheling in. And they have like this this really nice like double flash combo. Jing gets one on the entry. We're trading out our team. And, and then Buzz just kills four. Like it was an absurd game from him. Um, yeah. I mean, he had on Ascent, he had two 4Ks and a 5K. <laughs> so yeah, they just literally won them three rounds completely on his own. And those weren't anti-eco rounds either from what I can remember. It was him just going nuts. Um, I do want to spend a moment, though, just the final point here that, that I wanted to ask you guys about. Something is the highest rated player in Pacific, and we've talked about how nasty he is, right? He's been playing the Jet, he's been playing the, the Rainer, he looks crazy. But also the second highest rated player on VLR, so it's not by like ACS, but it's by the, like the VLR rankings, is Devai, a player who we don't really talk about very much on Paper X historically. He's been a player that's mostly been like the... The, the the fill guy, the flex guy, but very much behind the I mean, rest even of when the he players. was playing this Chamber, he never put up numbers. Yeah. This is this is pretty I actually didn't know this. And I mean it, part of this is I think fried. I think I think rating is terrible, but uh it's like his numbers on these agents are really, really I, good. But look at Bunny's yeah. Bunny's rating. Guys, yeah, but Bunny, ACS. Bunny played in the show match. Bunny's Scroll up and take the show goat. match off Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> No. Best player no. in the world, baby. But wait, judge, Bunny judge. is stepping go, go, in for go, something. Go, go. Bunny is. Uh, it's going to happen. Breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was, Devai is nasty. He just. So many very, very, very impactful moments by him. Yes. And uh, yeah. He's IGLing too, by the way. And maybe you don't actually need an IGL. Maybe this is the fucking wave. Or maybe well, he's he's not, is he IGL? He, I heard it okay. was like kind of a it's community everybody thing. Everybody IGLing, like, but like so I, I originally heard it's the coach with a buzzer in each of his players' <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and if he buzzes Forsaken, it's like a B split. If he buzzes something, it's a different thing. <laughs> oh. Like yeah, in their shoes. Yeah, yeah, we all know that <laughs> straight up the ass MC. <laughs> ben Kai is just—he's still the IGL. He's just got more information now. It's just got his fingers everywhere. Yeah. Wait, imagine if David Denia thought this. <laughs> That's why Benkai AI. isn't going to be their sub. That's why Benkai's still on the yes, bench. Yeah, because he, he needs to control them like, exactly. like a fucking puppet. Like... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 Josh, these are teenagers, what? bro. I mean, that's that's how puppets work. That's all I meant. <laughs> what? That's how puppets work. Chewing you put your puppets. hand up a puppet. 
Well, no, well, you put... said humans are non sentient. What's the difference with this? I said babies. Very different. Don't oh, 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 <laughs> Don't stop <laughs> this. Babies aren't human. I mean, they are, but they're not full humans yet. They, oh, like, like, they, they haven't grown into. E oh, the oh, Republicans okay. would love you. Yeah, I know. I know. It's crazy. No, no, I'm against what they're saying. They want. Oh, okay. A device okay, a really good player. Yeah. Device, <laughs> device a really good player. Uh, he's he's oh, completely. No, oh, he's IGLing. IGLing. Let me, IGLing. Okay, so, okay. Let me let me hit the IGLing. So. Originally, when I talked to the casters, they had spoken to the team and they said that Devai was doing most of the IGLing now that Benkai was out of the roster. And then when you listen to their comms videos, of which they've been posting a ton of them, and they're really like good comms videos too, where they show almost the they whole are. round happening. Um, it's it's a lot of different people. Like something is calling a lot of plays that revolve around him being set up in a certain spot. And they've also got Forsaken and Devi doing a lot of mid-rounding stuff as well. And then I would say the quietest are Jing and then Mind Freak. Like those guys are pretty quiet. But between something calling stuff that involves him and Devi and uh, Forsaken calling like mid roundy stuff, that's how it sounds like their IGL system is set up. Now, they also said in interviews afterwards that Forsaken was hardcore IGLing the grand finals. That he actually, like, just for the grand finals, took over, like, actual IGLing, whatever that means. So I don't know how much more that was compared to his normal calling, but... Well, I mean, yeah. a lot of times the moments, like, just require somebody to just step up and start sure. calling, like, a fucking... But, uh, so I would assume that's something that's going on. And also yeah. what happened kind of in the, the loud NRG thing, too, where a lot of people were saying it was less, or Sadak was saying less was, like, doing a lot of calls in the yeah. finals, too. I mean, so you can trust players a lot. Ye was an IGL as well at one point, so mm. true. Like, never trust what players say. If there's <laughs> one thing we're learning, just they exist. Like our ideas, how they started, we got to ask about a seating chart. By the way, this has never been gone into. We got to ask about a seating chart. We're like, where's everyone going to be comfortable? Ye's like, well, I can sit in the middle, and we're like, Ye's the IGL from here on until <laughs> April Fools. Ye is the IGL. That is all it took for us all to commit to like that whole thing was a seating chart. So like, Perfect. grain of salt with anything any of us ever say. Just Notorious heads trolls. Up, heads up, yeah. Uh, cool. Also, I wanted to poll you guys on Benkai literally being like on the bench, not even the sub. So if something can't make Tokyo, it would be a massive blow for this team. Enormous yeah. blow. But they also want to run cigarettes as their sub instead of going back to the old roster with Benkai, which to me just seems it, insane. It's because of the show match. Cigars, cigarettes popped off in the show match, and they're like, Bankai, we don't need you. Yep. Also, <laughs> Gecko, he played Gecko in the show match. Really weird. So, gotta add some it's flavor. The, the, yeah. only game, the only official he's played was one map where they played Icebox, where it was Gecko, where I'm pretty sure in an interview afterwards, Paper X was just like, Yeah, it's the last week of, it's the last week of Icebox. We thought we'd pick it. You know what? Let's, let's, give, let's give him some playtime. Whatever, man. We're going to try it out. And they got and, rolled by Global yeah. Esports. Yeah, 13 7. <laughs> so, so i mean isn't that just ludicrous they're baiting. no they're baiting same thing drx these guys are confident they've got the sub coming in this was the plan the whole time <laughs> they knew something wasn't going to be able to play in tokyo and this is their secret weapon this is some bullshit we need oh. to get more, bro, we need to get more leakers inside of the fucking team camps bro this is yeah, bullshit. We, I, we need george gets sign the paper x let's go sign up Let's fucking yep. get in I there. I mean, if MC just started tweeting things with like a, a, a picture he stole a flicker and like oh. a flag emoji in front of the player that he says is playing, it's believable. Okay. The, you can do it. I'm, I, my I'm, completely in, I'm completely in favor of shipping George Geds off to a very, very far away location and cutting off all of his access to the internet <laughs> while he lives undercover and creates essentially a new life for himself for many years. And we'll check back in with him then and see whether he's a slightly better person. So I, I, I'm always, down for that. I, I talked about this on my stream yesterday that I have always wanted to make a fake news account as like a player because we have so much more information than everyone else. Tweet or like go through like five really things you wouldn't believe but happen. So everyone's like 100% credible, never right. misses. Oh, hey. And then just just do something like <laughs> Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo is joining EG. And they're like, well, he's been right all the other times. Like, <laughs> Dude, we got you. We'll sign you up for a Streets or Talking episode literally next week. Don't worry about it. We can, <laughs> True, we no start. one believes those episodes ever. I mean, they never show you. You just I, make stuff up all I'm the time. Just, yeah.
Uh, Tim C is the streets. My favorite. What, what, my favorite. What do you actually think? Sorry, what do you actually think their chances are though if they play with cigarettes? I think like they will they don't still play do something. okay. I still think they will do okay. Uh, it gives them a little bit of extra time. I don't know if they think Van Kai is that valuable outside. If there's something outside the server where he's like, I just can't play anymore. Like, we don't know. And they made that choice for a reason. I trust teams uh, for the most part because, like, they know better than the outside. So, like, there's something that's happened that they believe, you know, whether Cigarettes is just a sick Reyna player and Bankai isn't as good at Reyna. Like, you know, that could be all it is. So, like, I, I trust the team to make the decision in that moment and, like, they have their best interest at in mind because I the alternative is just not good. They're like, ah, made Tokyo, going to Disneyland, let's let Cigarettes play. So, like... <laughs> I, I truly believe that, like, they're going to... This is what they believe their best chance of winning is, and they have a reason behind that. It's not just like, oh, we drew names out of a hat, like, Lucky, Forsaken, and Jing drew the yeah. right ones. Like, no, they have a reason for it. What that reason is, we'll, we'll never know, but they're, they're confident in that choice, and you have to, you know, respect that they've thought about it. Okay, let's move on then to talking about the other uh, teams that have qualified to Tokyo. So it was T1... Uh, from the Pacific region that's qualified by taking down Gen G. And then they had a banger of a match against DRX as well that was that went full to five and looked like they had chances of winning. Um, one of my biggest takeaways from watching T1 is, holy shit, Carpe is so much better than he was before. Yes. Like, I, I, I've taken a while off from watching the Pacific VOD, so I tuned back in to watch a bunch of T1 games towards the end of the season and then their playoff games as well. Oh my God, he's improved astronomically. It's really freaking good. But he's just multi kill machine on Brimstone. The yeah, I, there's not really too much for me to like analyze or anything like that. I don't, I don't think he's like got an insane depth or anything like that. He just has really, really good mechanics, and I think he's in a really good team that's doing the right things for him to be yep. able to have that sort of impact. I, I just want to talk about if Loud would have won Iceland, we would have five NA teams in Tokyo. Up. Oh. <laughs> What? what? Yeah, because true, T1, true. T1 true, is the sleeper North American team that made it through the APAC <laughs> division. Holy shit. You have so Ban, true. you have Saya, you have I mean, Zeta. All five That's of these an NA team. Played in NA. Munchkin and yeah. Carpe played in NA when they played Overwatch. Yeah, so we just, we're just sending sleeper agent teams to other regions. Their to manager's name is literally to dominate. Wawa. <laughs> it's it's an all American yeah, squad. Like, it's literally it's, from New Jersey. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but like I, I actually looked at this because I laugh, I watch Plat Chat, and I think it's hilarious that Plat Chat doesn't care about APAC. So me, the guest, wow. I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys out. The wow. biggest thing coming into this is Jinji's map pool is fucking dog shit. The only maps they play are fracture and ascent. Uh and like they're playing a fracture comp where there's no sentinel on a map that has four different entrances. Like of any map you don't play a non-sentinel on, this is the map that's just gonna cause the most problems. And so like they haven't changed anything. And then coming into it, they're like, yeah, we have some info with KO. They were two and four coming into this map this season. And then they took all the info and they're like, we don't want any of it. We just wanna like roll the dice every single round, put Jet in, take away KO. I didn't understand this coming into it. Because, like, the limited information you had with KO, all of a sudden you don't have. So it's like, oh, we're just face checking everything. And, uh, like, I had wrote down a couple rounds. I don't know if we can actually go to, like, the, the fracture round that I put down. Kurt. You put them in the yeah, chat. We can pull it up. Yeah. Um, but, like, this is the problem with the sentinel list comp on fracture. Uh, 9 to 10 on the fracture, Jinji uh, versus T1. So we're I'm almost there. Future? Nine to ten. Not, not what round. do you mean nine to ten? You mean round nine? The score. Uh score round twenty. Oh, the score is round is nine. My to my ten. fault. Right. I'm round here. twenty. Round twenty. Oh, good. Thank you, Curtis. So I think you should analyze that round. This is the first time we've done real analysis on this show, by the way. This is gonna be crazy. This is more True. analysis that I'm about to do than all the watch parties put together I've done in the last like Holy month. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is incredible. Uh, one more round. I'm struggling with this new format. My brain can't process it. Hold on. What's Sorry, it? I linked the other <laughs> analysis. All right, okay, we're, so here, we're here. Round. We're here. Okay, so basically, if you look at this round, like as it plays out, uh, what you're going to see is there are four openings on the map. So it's like already you're you know there's going to be a gap, and you're just terrified of this gap existing. 
So early, Jinji shows the breach here, which you know is probably going to be your stack, right? So off that information, you just see uh, Munchkin is just like, I'm going to walk up and somebody has to face check. Somebody has to be holding an angle that is disadvantageous to a defender because you're not scared of trap plays. You know the breaches use the sun. So he just gets to go up for free and then pause or go back a little bit on this to where Munchkin gets the kill crit. So it's like at this point, Saya knows like they're here. They also reshow or smoke on A main here. So it's like Saya just gets to walk out of a smoke and he knows at worst he has a 1v1. And if he finds that player, Munchkin knows exactly where he is. So playing this round out, look, look where Ban is. They got the advantage. They got the entries. All of a sudden you can't save. This is like nightmare situation because they have no ideas here. You know, uh, TS is coming back like fucking surprise, like gun down. <laughs> And it's like all of a sudden, like this is the, these comps are so in theory potentially good, and I I worry about loud because loud played a sentinelist comp on this map, and they it's said like they stole it from Genji. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And but the, it wasn't this one exactly, right? No, yeah, yeah, they were in a neon. So yeah. the the thing I'm concerned about loud, and like I shouldn't tangent on into this, is like with a comp like this, you have to fight. And you saw Genji throughout this match; they have to be aggressive, and in mid rounds they have to be aggressive because it's like. Oh, they could be five dish behind me. So it's like coming into the series, man, like this is a dream scenario for a team trying to qualify to Tokyo is like this map pool where, you know, Fracture, if you're any good at it at all or can work the map, you find their stack, you walk out and do whatever. And then you go into Ascent. It's a miracle. Jinji was competitive in this map. If you watch this map, they lost. I think T1 lost like three different 1v3s or something crazy. And like Carpe is just looking, you know, we were talking about it. He's doing the McCree cosplay. I, I think that's an <laughs> Overwatch character. I don't know. But uh, like he's coming in. He's looking more comfortable. These guys are gelling better and better and better because when they started, I'm going to tell you, we played these guys. I was not impressed. I was like, this yeah, is going to be bad. Good. This is going to be bad. This team completely different, completely different. Uh, they, but yeah, yeah sorry. No, um, no, no, no. Keep ranting. Oh, like but it. like they they look so much better. And then like this is one of the rounds that they get 1v3 that it's like this is a pretty unlosable situation if you play this right. But it's just like little nerves, things like this. And these happened in the first like five rounds of this game to mentally break. And it's just like Meteor has knives. He's sick with it. Sai is playing this exceptionally well and he just loses his fight at the end in this round. But it's like T1 lost multiple 1v3s in this match early in this game they like won the eco the carpe eco and the 1v3 sheriff next round immediately lost reset completely on the uh you know defensive side of ascent which is like a nightmare situation and t1 like you know munchkin i think in overwatch was known to be a little bit of a hothead like things like that where it's like this team went through a match for a qualification game where they kept their cool in bad situations and ended up bringing out a map win when like everything went against them so it's like, how good can T1 be? Are they going to be challenging on everything like that? But like this map looked close. I'm telling you, I went back and watched this. It was not close. Like the only reason it was close was just hero plays from Gen G to yeah. even bring them in this. And like, you know, T1 just looked like the better team this entire time. Yeah. T1 well, have... looks significantly better than Gen G do. Yeah. It, it was a, a rematch. So like part of the like fracture like story about them like changing out of the KO and stuff like that is like trying to get an edge um, yeah they they should have done that before they had played the exact same no sentinel comp eight times in a row and lost every freaking time yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think also when i was like watching this team at lock in they honestly looked like kind of similar to like what drx was in like playoffs where it's just like the very classic grand style of like okay we are just going to set up we have some of these preset executes that we want to do we have these these set ideas and if that breaks down we kind of get clueless in the mid round and at that event to my understanding munchkin was calling i think for pacific they kind of reworked their system they they kind of let zeta and autumn who were even before playing on this team like the the duo who were leading at cloud nine and uh, obviously vanity was on the team at the time too but have that experience together in charge of calling and they just looked so much more competent in the mid round uh on that fracture map they consistently did a good job of exploiting that killjoyless comp even when it got into the the lower final versus drx i felt like when drx was doing a lot of their like more one-dimensional sight takes and stuff 
T1 was super proactive, like on their defense side of like yeah, yeah. re-pushing sp- space, finding flanks against these executes and being able to flood retake in and find a lot of value with it. They look just so much more coordinated. They have such better ideas of what their goals are in the mid round instead of just we are setting up for this exact instead like, okay, the, we see them use a knife. We're going to we're gonna re-clear B main, push behind, set up for a flank, something like that. It's just like... I honestly think like T1 might be the most improved team from like yeah. lock in to now Tokyo. And That's the thing is, I hadn't really thought about that. It's it's all of them. The most important thing. It's not you know Saya, Ban, Zeta. They're used to the game. Munchkin's used to the game. You see Carpe taking these risks and doing these things as well. It is all of them that are making these proactive plays. And I think that's a huge step forward for T1 as a team. Like it, it's showing that they've worked on these things and they just look so much more comfortable. I mean, it's literally the opposite of Genji, where yeah. <laughs> Genji has nobody who's making those proactive types of plays when they need them to. And I think a lot of it comes down to just being more comfortable with each other. And I don't, I don't think before. You know, after Ludwig Tarek, after lock-in, I don't think we gave enough, like, talk about, like, how difficult bringing a team like this together, moving three players over to the the, the Korea band specifically, you know, who probably doesn't have, honestly, the, I, I think I, I've spoken about, like, getting used to. I mean, it was Ben's and, first team speaking Korean. It was, I think, yeah. like, he, and now the first they, time he's actually lived in Korea. It's a huge change. Uh, and and they, now a lot of the times they come in English. Like, yes. And you could you could yeah, watch some of these both. calm videos, and it's so good. Zeta is very clear about what he wants his teammates to do, what, like, the ideas are, what the possibilities are, and it's really, really nice to see. I think getting used to that environment is what has catapulted them and into qualifying, honestly. It's also been a process because they didn't look great when Zeta first took over IGLing. Like it's, they had to take that time to, you know, work through all of this stuff. They didn't just swap their IGL and immediately become better. They yeah. had to take to some time that? to really. <laughs> no. Ah, uh, nobody. But the... I, I wasn't even joking about me. I was talking about Sentinels like mid season. They're just like, you're IGLing, you're IGLing, you're IGLing. Oh. Like, I hope it works. Yeah, yeah. No, I no, I I'm not uh I'm not saying that you cut vanity in order to improve immediately at the beginning of the season. I'm not That is what that he implication. did. Well, he, every, yeah, true. every player I cut, racks. I absorbed their salary. So like mm. as time goes uh-huh. on, it's just more and more money. Like I have That's to smart. cut everyone. You're insulating yourself for the esports winter like a chipmunk yes. ho- hoarding in your <laughs> mouth. Yes. Like like just absorbing salary to just put in your mouth like this will keep me through the winter. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I think has been really impressive about T1 is their um, ability to cook up different set plays. Like they have a lot of different weird things that they do. It's not, it's not necessarily like um, Paper Rex. It's not to that degree. But they play the Gecko Comp on Haven, and they have some really interesting ideas of how they want to uh, make that work. They play it with the uh, Breach instead of with the um, okay. Sova. I mean... I'm contrasting it to 100 Thieves who play with the Silver. Um, and then they have the Gecko Comp that they play on Bind as well, right? Where they play the... Uh, they play... Wait, sorry. I think I'm mixing them up with... Uh... No, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. no they, they play the Gecko yeah, Comp on Bind. Comp. Yes, Gecko, Harbor but, Viper. But I think I'm mixing them up. They don't play the Gecko Comp on Haven, no? No, that's just 100 no, 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 Thieves. No, they they no, play no, like I... normal Breach Silver there. No, no, no I was, I was no, keep, getting my keep wires talking crossed about with T1, Foot, uh, but, Haven. No, 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 not the Haven, not the Haven. I was mixing them up with foot. But the the Gecko Comp on Bind, they have some like cool ideas of what they want to do on that map. And it's it's sensible, you know? Like they have ideas of how they want to like for example, Carpe's gonna use his wingman and his dizzy to re-clear the Viper Lurks down short. And he's got his utility into good spots where he's got like lineups prepped so that they come back into good spots where he's gonna be able to pick them up on the map. Uh, they have the pushes that they do down B long to be able to take that area of the map too with it. So it seems it it's cool. Like I think that it's got ways that teams can play against it for sure, but it's an interesting idea that's been really well thought out by the team. Yeah. Yep. Do you think they're gonna do damage at Tokyo? No. no. Wow. What group are they in again? I don't remember. <laughs> It does, they're in the group EDG, of death. T1, not the EG. EG is winning Tokyo. Uh, they're but they're the, not the group with EG. Oh, okay. They're not in the group of EG. I so wanted fine. to go on my tangent again about EG's. You group. can pop off an EG in a moment. No. In a okay. moment. We'll, we'll get back to that. 
But uh, I, I don't know. I, I honestly could I could see a world where they get out of a group. I, I don't think they should be expected to, but no. No? no? Just no? no? Uh, I think energy is too good, Um, and you have Na'Vi. The only way they make it out of the group is if Na'Vi loses to Na'Vi's energy. getting a bit of trolling. I think well, Na'Vi's going to lose to energy. I, I, I think don't, there's a chance in the I don't bracket. think so, because the map pool is the worst possible situation for it. I think that is why Na'Vi has a chance to beat them, and then they're going to make it out of so. Like, mm. I think the only reason that energy potentially loses is because of map. Um, that, you know, they just look good. Um, I mean, energy can have days where they're just not the best. But, you know, they look better and better. Uh, they're on a forward momentum. Um, and I, I believe in energy in those players to do well enough to, like, 1v1 against T1. I've, like, I love Saya, but, like... I don't think they have enough to carry themselves against an energy. Is the problem. yeah yeah. I agree, but that, what about Navi? I feel up. like it's I, I I feel like it's conceivable. I, I think that that's a nightmare Navi. situation because Navi is one of those teams that's playing these comps that you never have practice against. Sure. And I mean, like we literally are we gonna do pickums later on? I feel like we should do pickums now. I think we're doing power rankings. Uh, we're, we're doing power a oh, we're, go we're gonna do the power rankings instead. Okay, okay. So fair enough then. Fair enough. Yep. Continue. Yeah, I mean oh. that that was it. For me, all right, okay. I, I did want to ask you one more question before we move on about Sire Player because you played with him or rather coached him uh, previously. The one thing that I'm noticing a lot with T1 when I watch Sire, he every time he's in a good situation, he's he's got to get another. He just has to get another. He has to peak. He has to get another. And I feel like when I watched him play with the guard, that team was quite drilled, disciplined, and it's not that T1 don't have that entirely. But they do have the tendency with Sire and Munchkin to get a little greedy and take the take the pick and then go looking for another and find that and go and try and like snowball it forwards and forwards and where they find an advantage and they end up just throwing it away. Is that something that you had to work on with him or is that? Um, like, I not... think this is actually a good sign for Sire's development personally, because yeah. when Sire was on T1 um, and came into uh, the guard. One of the things that uh, I had to try to push was like, I need you to be more aggressive in some of these situations, especially when he was oping. He was a op turret. His op was insane. But I mean, you guys think back to on T1, like the wine meme with Omen. Dude, like, he never did um, anything different. He yeah. was so static on and T1. And like, that was a big thing. And he had a lot more freedom, obviously, and wasn't told like, you are going to go sit here and do this or else. Uh, but like even then, like the thing that comes to mind is on Haven on Long A, when an opper does gets the line, a lot of the oppers, if they're C default in anything like that, they will run up Long A to take the A lobby line. That is something that I was like, Saya, we need you to start trying to do these little things. So like to me, you guys are seeing this as a negative thing. I'm seeing this as a positive that Saya mm. is expanding his game to be more aggressive in these situations. Does he need to tone it back? Probably, but. Coming from the player that he was to, like, the player he is now is actually huge, like, in my opinion, as a Jet player. Because I've always said your duelist either needs to be the smartest player in the server or the dumbest. So it's like, <laughs> being aggressive as a duelist is good. Like, we praise Demon 1 for all these things, but, like, yeah, yeah I mean, it. I'm just, yeah, I'm very happy for Saya that, like, he continues to develop as a player. Uh, and try these new things, and I, I think it's a good sign, personally. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that quote, because I'm both the smartest and the dumbest on my team, so it's yeah. fucking great. <laughs> so you're an, and you carry on Duelist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, it, it works perfectly. Um, okay, let's let's take a break, and after this, we'll do the power rankings, and then we will do our top ten lists, which are just going to be egregious. But Woo! we'll take like, a break. segment in history, possibly. Oh, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Possibly. I'm going to go and get some water. I'll be right back. Fuck. Good luck, right. everyone. I just leave now. What? I just go get water and stuff now. Yeah, go get oh, water. Yeah, go yeah. get water. Okay. I forgot right to configure back. the countdown. Uh, by the timer, way, MC, so... the, the they could still hear us. Just so you know. Oh, he's gone. Mm. I can mute come back and drop some things. Get bombs. sussy. <laughs> yeah, you should probably just mute it just in case. <laughs> um, but yeah, I forgot to configure the countdown timer on I this can count new for setup. Everybody. So if you want to, if you guys Four collectively in chat want to count down from three minutes, that's when we'll start back up. Two fifty-seven. Two fifty-six. I also forgot to figure some other stuff. Wow, I really dropped the ball with this be right back screen, huh? Two fifty-three. Ball, don't. 
I love the royalty free music. Ding, 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 ding. Wait, yeah, maybe yeah, I can do it manually. There. Let's see. Wait, I think I can do it. Man. Hey, they are counting. The people are counting. Whoops. Whoa. That's pretty good, Kurt. What? Except uh, that says it's currently at 251, so... Also, I goofed it up. This timer is not actually... This timer is, like, counting down for three minutes, but it started at two. So each second yeah. is, like, slightly off, so it's, like, Oh, that's me. so funny. <laughs> it's, like, longer seconds. Yeah, hold on. Let me... Uh-oh. It's okay. Hey, you know what, Kurt? It's gonna end at the right time, <laughs> no, right? it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, stop pressing buttons. Please. I'm just pressing buttons. I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> oh, now it's you're frozen. Actually, you're going to hit the stop stream. All right, now it's counting down from one minute, but it has a hundred uh, minute 20 left. This is trippy, dude. Wait, what if I like pause add... it at one minute and then start it with one minute? Dude, we this need to add genius. a plot chat visualizer during the break screen. You know, where it just fucking... So with cool the music? trippy. Yeah. All right, check this out. Oh, now it's goodness. actually a minute. There we go. The way I have this oh, configured dude. is quite poor. <laughs> You're actually Doctor Strange and you can control time. Yeah, I'm actually going to get some water too. Be right back. Okay, good luck. Oh. Our producer's aren't allowed to take breaks. We should fire him. We should, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. It is. Listen, I've been watching like 24 hours of VODs and he can't even sit around without a glass of water. <laughs> Get rid of this guy. Get rid of this guy. I've been pissing in my seat because I don't want to take a break because I've got to ingest more EMEA VODs and this guy needs a break for some water. Unbelievable. You don't drink water anyways. So I'm literally doing it right now. No, you literally have told me you don't drink water. I'm drinking water currently. I've made an effort to try and drink more water recently instead of alcohol. And has it helped your mental and... No, I, I feel more dehydrated. <laughs> I don't know how it's happened, but I genuinely feel more dehydrated when I drink a lot of water. I think it's because I... because you pee all your hydration out. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe, yeah. I, maybe I need to tie my dick in a knot. <laughs> no, <laughs> Dude, what the... You got to get your, t your tube tied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, perfect time. hey welcome back to the show hey <laughs> hey welcome back to the show um all right let's let's do some power ranking shall we now before we begin i want to start with a bit of an existential question are we going to power rank teams like how they're actually going to so no for for, for no. something <laughs> and for demon one and that kind of thing are we going to power rank them with like we have cigarettes playing. Yeah, we have yes. Ultra Instinct why would, playing. Why would we, have, we not? We'll have Paper X, like, regular, and then Paper X Ultra Instinct. Which one's the Ultra Instinct? What do you think? The one... Yeah, come on, bro. I, never mind. He's old. He doesn't know what it means. But, I uh, don't even know what that means. Is that like a fucking yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh reference it's, or something? You're close. <laughs> you're close. Basically, you we're saying Paper X with the heart of the cards or Paper X without it. Yes. Exactly. The heart of the cards. Heart you said Yu-Gi-Oh! No, I never watched Yu-Gi-Oh! I just know the name of it. Oh, Blue perfect. Eyes, White Exodia or something, yeah? Close. Yeah, 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 close, He's close, close. Close, right. yeah. Okay, uh, where do we want to even- Oh, we haven't even talked Attacking about the Chinese sports. teams. You... <laughs> we talked about well, we you... talked about the Chinese teams a little bit when they qualified, but yeah, no. Okay, I know that you guys have been somewhat in the dungeon. I saw Mimi clips of Mimi molding over the Chinese teams as well. I haven't watched the Chinese teams. Mimi, are you, you're muted. I'm muted? I've been talking about how cherry tomatoes are actually a fruit, and that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't relevant, so it's a good job you're muted. Wait, why, no, why, why is that? Tomatoes are a fruit too, Mimi. Why? Like... Well, yeah, but that's crazy. Okay. Why I mean, it's got fruit? cherry in the name. Well, it's also, not a cherry. It doesn't have a pit. Okay. Yeah, uh, ch ch China. Uh, attacking Zoli Sports <laughs> are fucking insane. They're, they're, they're just, they're just insane. The, uh, 
the guy with the really long name. HMF5. HMFI 0ZJDC9Z9. Yeah, that There's guy. There's no shot you're remembering that to cast. He There's looked no it shot. up. I'm gonna Dude, write it no, down on my I've hand. I've been fucking, I've been, I've been writing it like this, just fucking HMFI. It, he just opens like his notebook. He opens, yeah, exactly. He opens his notebook. It's just over and over and over. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to do it from memory. I have my three parts. I've literally, yeah, no, it's happening. That's like you're writing the name of your crush, just like over and over again as well. He's like you're manifesting writing little attacking him. soul esports in the playoffs. <laughs> you're not gonna, not gonna happen, by the way. Talk to me about ASC Mimi. Do you believe in them? Where, no. where, first where off, should they reasonably go? No, they're getting grouped in the first round, <laughs> and I don't think they're going to win a match. They they aren't even going to get a play the second match. match. <laughs> no, they're going to play the first BO3 and be like, yeah, we're going home. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Oh my god. They're going to play both games. That will happen. That, I can say, <laughs> is a proven fact. They will play at least two series of Valorant and at least four maps. Um, You guys remember FPX, right? You guys remember when their fade IGL player was like, Lurking every round. Yeah, and Shao's like... insane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. Um, XFMI is the exact opposite of that. He is just like, he plays uh, uh, Harbor on some maps. He plays Initiator on pretty much every other map. And he has a carnal desire to run as deep into the enemy spawn <laughs> at all times, no matter the situation. He, uh, The amount of things that he does is absurd. And he's a really good player. He will 50-50 rounds where he will either run into spawn and, and kill three players and do something ridiculous, or will just straight up die and lose it for you. It is wild. Random players will be lurking. Both of these teams, actually, are Is he the IGL? I don't know. This I, right, I tried okay. to track down information. Very hard to find info on this team. I have no right. idea. Both these teams also adore lurking jets. Both Life and Kong Kong on the attacking side will oftentimes just like be sitting in an extremity the entire round while their team is executing a site, doing something ridiculous. But on the defense, Life is also just the GOAT. If he buys an operator, he will simply kill everyone. Um, he has a, a deep love for the shorty, as a lot of Chinese yep. jet players do. Loves loves a good dash onto a, sh dash onto a sky dog stun or something like that. Ridiculous things of that sort. Uh, Monk has a tendency to just drop like three kills some games. <laughs> he just does that sometimes um yeah and then they also just play they, they play really goofy comps like they're they played like solo they play solo controller just omen lotus and then they play a breach but then like their jet i don't feel is actually getting set up with the breach stun so it's just like at that point why don't we just play if we just want to use it for line control why don't we just play a neon and say i i don't really get it they just do very weird things they're very silly but they also have mm. some insane, like, individual players. It, it, it really does feel quite mirrored to, to what FPX was to me. Okay, I so we have Monk enjoy... that's either going to go 3 or 30, apparently. Yes, yeah. correct. Respect. He's the epitome of the NBA meme where it's like, I would rather a guy go 0 and 70 than 0 and 5 because 0 and 5 means he <laughs> stops shooting the ball. <laughs> yeah, you just take every oh fight you possibly Wait, who, can. Oh my god, who plays that split comp? Which one of them is it? The solo harp. Okay, it's it's attacking solo esports. They, they play, they play Omen, Gecko, Herber, Jet, Killjoy uh, on split in stage one was the composition that they ran, which was uh, absurd. Uh, most teams these days, though, like meta is, were like using our Viper utility to cycle from mid control on our defensive side. Their idea was just constantly cycling Harbor utility in mid, but like HFMI would just be like running it down and putting like a curvy wall where he has a weird little gap and just like pushing alone and, and doing weird shit in mid at all times, which is just like if you wait 20 seconds, all his util is going to be gone, and then you can just take mid. I, I, I didn't well, really get dude, it. Dude, I also love how KO-pilled this team is. I, I want to be clear. I haven't watched any of their comps, but it's just fun looking at their VLR pages, frankly, as well. Like, I, I'm, I'm almost like, you know how sometimes when there's a big meal laid out in front of you, but it's it's through a glass window or something. You can't smell it, but you can sense it. You can be like, mm, 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 mm. oh, I can just tell how this would taste. When I look at the VLR page, I'm looking at them playing Bind with Jet, Ray's, KO, Sky, Brim as their composition. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be glorious watching that. That's going to be fun. And then, like you said, on Split, um, on Pearl, too, they played the like loud default comp of the, the Jet, Sky, 
Harbor Viper, but then they have a KO instead of the Killjoy. Yeah. It just... Oh, just, there are so mm, many gaps left on the defensive side. One, one, one sound, one piece of utility, this team will, like, full rotate on their defense and just leave gaps. It, it I'm is... so excited to watch this team play. Yeah, I haven't watched a, any of their They, they leave be... a lot of stuff open. So where are it they going to be? Wild. We're doing a power rankings here, Mimi. Where are they going to be? Number one. Well, <laughs> of the wait. teams to be eliminated. Of the yeah, I mean, I I don't think anyone is. I think they've got to be twelve. I was just like, it was really fun watching, but I was just molding. I did it like very late at night, so I'm trying to even remember what happened and which team was doing what. Are you it's sure you actually watched it, or is it just a fever dream? Yeah. I don't know. It's possible. It's, it's, the it's same been pretty thing hot outside way. here. Like maybe I I don't know. Okay. Maybe it was dehydration. Can I hit you with a? Do you think? Do you not think that Paper X with cigarettes or EG with Reformed, like the teams that are playing okay. with a sub? EG is winning Tokyo. EG. Your pickums are deranged. <laughs> I've seen your pickums. I've seen reasons. the clips. Do you argue with, like, it's solid have you, logic? Have you scrimmed against Reformed on Jet ever? Have you ever have, seen Reformed I have, play I Jet? I will pull up the screenshot of Reformed shitting on us with Jet. Really? <laughs> yes. I, I feel like you're lying now to justify your pickups. No, no. I, I can't actually show it, but we did play them. He was on jet. We were memeing it, and then he actually did really well. Because <laughs> we were like, uh, they're, they're 10th player who can't be named. I was like, oh, this must be fun. Why aren't you on this? And then we're like, screw face. Why are you getting to play jet? They're like picking the one guy. They have like seven jet yeah. players. And they're like, yeah, that guy. Whatever. Go for it. And like, apparently he's just a jet main at heart. I don't know. He did well against us on one of our better maps. Huh. Uh, and I was impressed. We actually had to come to Jesus talk after that scrim because I was so pissed at what happened in the scrim. So... <laughs> oh, uh, okay. uh, Josh, Pretty you'll easy. enjoy this. You'll enjoy this. They they also Carmen code their economy sometimes. They uh, there was like two rounds I distinctly remember where they like time force like a guardian <laughs> half armor and just utterly in their economy. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah, but I really like shot. that. <laughs> I really I really like teams that do that. Okay, so so which of the other teams have we not been big on? Because I feel like okay, well, how about? I feel like let's just pick a team and throw them in somewhere. MC, pick a team, throw them in somewhere. T1. Okay, where do you want to put T1? Roughly, and we'll we'll adjust the finer details later on. Like roughly, where T1 do you think we should go? T1 is eleventh. Eleventh. Okay. Uh, all all of these teams are together. I mean, T1 should be tenth, but I'm just assuming EDG absolutely accidents someone. Okay. Okay. So you're you're ranking things in terms of like who goes out first in groups. Yes, 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 yes. Right, right. So you're you're predicting T1 to go out first in groups, therefore they have to be 11th, 12th. Well, no, no, no. They, they'll be 10th, but I think EDG will like play well enough that they're like, are they arguably like they should be interchangeable? Yeah, I agree with that. What what do you agree with? I don't know. I don't know what he said. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> this guy's just actually lying. outed. Actually outed for being a conformist sheep. No, I just I I think T1 is tenth. I think EDG goes out first, but I think EDG arguably looks better while they go out than like one of the other teams. That's I mean, what I'm EDG to literally plays against T1 to start though. That's the weird thing. Like one of those teams has to. T1 like one of those teams there, cannot. Man. Are we All doing right, this so, again? Group stage stuff in the... Oh. What, what if we just... Let's, e let's ignore the bracket. We've never you seen wanna, the bracket. Because I'm going to push my... I'm going to push my EG narrative. So, like, maybe don't let me power rank teams. Okay. Okay. Also, EG could still win the tournament whilst being the fifth power ranked team. True. You know what I mean? Like, you True. can be the fifth best team and go on a run and still win the tournament. Yeah. About right, power, so, not okay. about what they actually right. are well, going to do. If you're going to be a power ranking purist, Mimi, then you name a team okay. and put them in. I, I don't say, you can't say any of the top three. You can't say okay. anybody you're going to put top three. It's more fun. Okay. Um, I think we can just do bottom up. And I think, in my opinion, T1 and EDG will be about the same in power level. But I would expect I could see T1 pulling off an upset yes. in more situations than I see EDG pulling off an upset. Okay. EDG, I... Just to put it in context, I haven't watched as much of their stage two stuff. Um, 
I watched a little bit and they definitely got, be- they were playing better in stage two. Stage one, they were doing a lot of silly as they often do. They're like gecko attack side opping for some reason in like half their oh, yeah. rounds and playing really I'm weird blind. comps and looking troll. But this is still the core of insane players who've played together for quite a while and actually have solid coordination when they want to and can upset teams as they have proved before in previous events. But I still think a lot of their ideas are just inherently troll. See attacking operator gecko uh <laughs> see picking gecko on ascent just to do one dizzy a main and really have no other ideas with it besides to use the the fish when you get your all like they have gone back to playing the default comp on ascent now yes okay so the they, they did gecko. fix that one because that that yeah. that gecko comp was i mean very very troll just not good. very very yeah. troll um but okay uh, they have gone back and fixed that still i think i can't really warrant putting them above anyone else i would consider it an upset if they beat any of the other teams except attacking Soul Esports. Whereas T1, as we've already discussed, have shown some vast improvements. Carpe's looking bit way better. They actually look like a coordinated team. Zeta's IGLing has clear ideas of what they want to do in the mid round. They have goals set. There's okay. a lot less moments where players are just inting in. Saya will still get aggressive, get a little silly sometimes. It happens. They're a lower ranked team in the tournament. But I could also see them maybe upsetting a Navi if, if Navi's having a tough one. I could see them beating an EDG. I think they are low in the power rankings but above those two yeah okay and i'm here to curse as many teams as possible so <laughs> bala give me another team that's going to be around this kind of area oh uh around this area let's see navi navi really? you've got navi underneath foot oh. as i mean no 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 jesus christ not that not that far you said this area i said six okay we're talking oh, you about said sixth okay oh, so okay, you want yeah. to put navi in the six. Okay. Navi. oh my god you think their okay. current power is six all right I what's think the the america's navi, uh, navi angel is on a mad bender like angel's no, no. compositions are crazy what he's been running recently That's is good. just absurd. Good. And they've got no practice on any normal compositions. Like, I can understand people hiding normal comps, but, I mean, he's only been playing crazy shit all season long. Yeah, but the content has stopped, right? There's no more content, so it's, it's, they're practicing now. They're actually scrimming. Oh, we weren't supposed right. to be practicing while doing content? <laughs> <laughs> I missed that memo. <laughs> No, I just so this like... is just your conspiracy theory that like in the nine days they had since like EMEA ends to like having to fly to Tokyo and then like the what three days after until it starts, they're going to just like turn it around, show their real comps, be the Navi that we we've all expected and we've been waiting to see you're on you're on that train. Mm-hmm. I don't even think yep. they need to. These guys are good enough individually that like on a day. Yeah, but they have to stop playing the like dog shit stuff. No, right? I understand that. But I'm saying even if they load up with like phoenix yoru i don't know name yeah. cypher killjoy yeah. chamber like they could still run over 100 100 and that's what they did all of EMEA. and also i'm not it's not like i'm ranking them super high here guys six is six not is, fucking good for navi is, like, no it's <laughs> not good for navi you're right but it is still fairly high i mean it might end up shaking out all right let, let's throw i want to throw foot in there where do you guys think foot is going to place because i i like this team but they play the game backwards like all of the <laughs> all of the stuff that you expect teams to do. You know how we were talking about Paper X coming up with really creative ideas and not never copying other people. They never copy the like default way of playing Harbor. They come up with it themselves. Foot have been locked in a chamber where they're not allowed to watch anybody else's VODs. Or maybe they've been told what comps to play, but they have to figure out how to play the comp themselves. And so all the utility, all the positioning is so different to where you expect yeah. teams to like put people. And they, I, I think they're a unique team, but in a tournament like this, where people will hard like prep for another opponent, I just don't see them really making a serious run. I think they'll end up slipping further behind in a tournament like this. But I think also, they'll end up behind Navi. But also Turkish wide swing. Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting but, point. Kiwi is going to have a chance to prove he is one of the best duelists in the world at this event. But you also can't Turkish wide swing with an operator, and that's what Kiwi's been doing a lot of. It's like 50 50. He looks really good when he rifles, he looks good when he ops. It's just yeah, but, no he's been, stuff, but he's 50 50 in like picking up an op 50% of the time. Yeah, but he's got an op in his hands playing neon on Lotus like yeah, it's half the time. It's cool. And how many times have they lost Lotus? 
I mean, they were losing it more recently than than uh, before. They lost but, it in a yeah, not, giga not overtime much. to Liquid. They lost it to Fnatic twice. Isn't that it? Yeah. Uh, it's basically yeah. like Loud's lost record against any team ever, right? Like, yeah. Just too they, bad. <laughs> I, I really like their Lotus. It's good, obviously. I'm I'm big on board, like any of the the Sky Neon teams. I'm a, a I, I I like that comp very much. I think they play it well. I like when they throw in the opping sometimes. I think it's pretty pretty sweet. I also I also like their ascent. I think they're quite good at that map. It's just like the classic Turkish team thing. Um, of just they they play the basic comp, but I think they have really good ideas of how they want to play it and have a solid understanding of how to mid round on that map. But uh, the rest of the map pool is like. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I feel like there's not a lot of depth with foot compared to some of the other teams we have here. I think they're really good on the maps that they've put a lot of effort into, and they're willing to show unique stuff. And even when they play normal comps, have their own setups, have their own variants that they're great at executing on. And I think the yep. players are fantastic. Kiwi's great. Uh, uh, Captain has been like fucking really insane. Good. He's been, He's been ridiculous in playoffs for, for these guys. Yeah. He saves them in clutch situations. His utility is consistent. Um, even like even Crax has had a lot of step ups, even though he's like this weird like KO only player in the year of our lord 2023 they still kind of can build in a way that it makes sense like this is a team that very much plays their own game but i think i think they can staunchly be better than basically all the other teams down here yeah. but i think navi even if they fix a little bit they should come back and beat foot if they play them again yeah, There's I mean, they, not much they play space here more at the top there's so many good teams i'm trying to think of like how to rank the rest I, oh. I'll throw an NRG at fourth. As okay. long as no America's team is top three, I'm happy with the ranking. That's just, it's That's just not crazy. true. No. MC. It's just not true. Wait, but the, you want, the, but hold on. You, oh, I see. What, oh, okay. Yes. I get what, it. I, what am I missing out on? He's trying to curse. He's trying to reverse curse here so that like. And it gets too slow. If I say EMEA is the best. Ah, uh, which they are, right? Yeah, but you're definitely not doing that they, just to the coast best. Them. No, okay. No, you also, can't put liquid here. Fanatic, no. put fanatic don't number one. Switch. Don't even no. talk about it. No, put, put fanatic, loud no. number one. Put loud number one. Put loud number one. Absolutely put not. Loud How put loud. Put they loud lost one. lock in the only international put tournament put we've had between these. They lost. Fanatic is number, number one. one. And Put well, and well, Fnatic one. has been playing generally the same stuff, and they have they have incredibly good just like synergy and coordination between the players. So they can play the same comps, play the same identities generally, and still beat teams. I imagine they'll have new stuff for Locken. On the other side, for for Loud, they have shown constantly innovating, trying new stuff out. They push Harbor Viper on a lot more maps during the regular season. In playoffs, they turn around. And pull out new stuff. They come up with that new fracture comp. Uh, they they steal the 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 neon uh, lotus comp and go and play that one. Or no no no, that's energy. That's I'm trolling. I'm wrong team. But still, they they came into Flashbacks, playoffs, had new ideas. Depression. My bad. Didn't mean to bring that one up. But <laughs> yeah, they had great ideas. Less is looking like in fucking giga insane form like even better than he normally is Ospos is still Ospos, and they also are the only like favorite that actually went and won their regional final that comes in with that first place uh, i think it'll be really close but i just lean loud here because what i've seen from Fnatic is i'm sure they're gonna have new stuff but what we saw was them playing the same shit they have for 50 years and ended up losing to liquid in the finals in part because of that but doesn't that give I... them an advantage in mm. this in this aspect literally all season long, we're like, oh, guys, don't worry, Fnatic, like, uh, they're, they're a team that just prep and bursts, and they're going to be fucking godlikes when it comes down to Tokyo, because they don't need to do anything and show anything, and that's going to be a huge advantage. And now we're just, like, not rating that advantage at all? I mean, I think it is an advantage. I just think loud, loud clears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, actually, I'm actually right there. Like, dude, watch, I just watched Liquid Beat Fnatic. I just did a vote review of the EMEA finals. That was the final, like, piece of the puzzle to escape me from the VOD dungeon. And, dude, Boaster forgot to buy a gun in one of the rounds. He does I it all the time. It's fine. He doesn't, he <laughs> yeah, I know he, he does that all the I time. I wouldn't buy a gun either if I had those four players on my team. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> they... 
they look like they were they look like they were shook in some of these moments too like alpha's beefing some clutches on a sand uh, the, the, Dirk is missing a cloudburst lineup when he's dashing into Fnatic, it on Haven. Fnatic right now is equivalent to Red Bull in Formula One. They are intentionally sandbagging so that they don't reveal how fucking good they are so that they don't get penalized by Riot and then being like, yeah, these five players can't be on a team anymore next season. <laughs> I mean, that's that's that, not true. That's Cloud a conspiracy nine. theory. Cloud9 are the Red Bull of uh, Cloud9 are the Red Bull of Valorant. They went over the salary cap and didn't get punished for it. And yet, you know that it's just two alternate Actually, worlds. I can't say what I was about to say, and it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I will say Cloud9 was not the one that spent the most. There you the go. Oh case. shit. Oh, oh, oh. oh bo bo It was okay. evil geniuses. But, but and also, that's why they're new yeah, they have guys. Yeah, it was EG. <laughs> it was EG. <laughs> Yeah, Guys, new new narrative. Fnatic are overworked. They've been they've been grinding hard. They've been pushing for all of this. They just got their first loss after winning everything, after never never having actually an opportunity with this roster to lose. And now they have very little time, like two weeks, to come back and prep for a new tournament and turn <laughs> the ship narrative. around and look and yeah. see. All, they, all they, they have to do though is they switch out their six player, they honeymoon buff, and roll everyone. Sure. Yeah, that's their normal plan. Who are you swapping out? Uh, Cammy K comes back in. Who are you swapping out? Mini. It's the only one that makes sense. Put the <laughs> six man in the coach role. That's going to be oh. enough of a bump. It's yeah. going to be enough of a bump. Mute his that mic. They're gonna roll mute his mic. Just fucking. He's off the goop. We're off the goop. Put <laughs> Benkai in for Boaster. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a, uh, tr a change. One for one. Uh, am I? Am I? Am I mad in wanting to put NRG over Liquid as well? I'm a Team Liquid hater. You guys are crazy. I'm kind of a dude. I'm Team Liquid had some really cool ideas, but I think most of the reason that they beat Fnatic was because they've played against Fnatic so much and they knew what Fnatic were gonna do the entire time. And Redgar had a fucking life game. Energy. They had so many insane moments. Energy has had one international win ever as an org. Team Liquid have never. They they made top four at champions. How many top fours has like the core of this team made? No, it's not the core. It's energy. You're trolling. What? You're trolling. trolling. <laughs> We're being trolled. Mute this guy's <laughs> What the fuck? No, no, Berlin, no. Berlin, Reykjavik, I, I, fucking That wasn't Copenhagen. energy. That was optic. Same We're team. True, actually, Same different team. team. Same Very team. different team. Can we can we move energy liquid both down by one and yeah keep liquid under energy and then put paper X with something in third? True. Yeah, true. Actually, yes. true. paper X with I, paper X is not, not playing with, with, something. with, something. with something. This is with something. not with something. But we're also going to end up kicking oh. attacking Soul Esports off the off the. Wait, power wait, no, 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 I, no, no, guys, I know how to do it. Just move okay energy that. and liquid back up to 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 three and four, and then just put paper X just off to the off to the side of energy because it's unlikely they'll play with something. But like, if they do, we know they all get bumped down one, and then we put real, uh, and then we get paper X without in wherever we're going right. to put it. I think that's a better way of doing it. Where yeah, the yeah, hell are we, we going to do it? How are we going to put this on? Just, we, we just make slide the Paper X logo to the left so the logo's like hanging out. It looks out. terrible. Look at that. Well, that's good. That's not what's if happened If it looks yet. good, if it looks bad, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Yes. Okay, yes, perfect. this is perfect. great. Also, can we make them Ultra Instinct? They're not Ultra Instincts. The, the color needs to be Ultra Instinct. I feel like we should have learned our lesson about playing with logos, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think Paper X would have to go above NRG, though. Can we swap those around? I am also okay with that, because yeah. I think energy should not be in the top three. Yeah, but I can't trust a single word that you're saying. Yeah, honestly, and yeah. This guy's a fraud. <laughs> Full BS. Oh, that's what I read Oh, DRX. Time. Where's DRX going to go? Uh, also, DRX below Navi. Below Navi. Below no, Navi? Not below Navi. I'm trolling and there's no fucking way. <laughs> no, you're right. I'm I'm lying. But I don't think they're gonna make they're not gonna make it out of groups, but they are one of the best teams in the <laughs> That's your hot take. Oh, because the they're in the group. You've gonna... seen my pickums. I went oh, over this. Yeah, you did. EG Evil is touched by God fun. to make it out of groups. You're touched. I don't know about <laughs> by God. <laughs> Um, what I think this is accurate. The hell is this power ranking? Switch fanatic and loud. Please. Wait, I, I'm not done. No. Paper Rex would not be better than T1 without something. I don't. I don't think. Well, in the head to head, I would agree. I would say that's they would be better, but not not overall. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. Why? Because just because? Oh, you just think just the way that they play, play is style just going to. Oh. But how is, it's not going to be a playstyle diff if they've got cigarettes playing Rainer. How do you? Know? Is it? No, he's not going to play. I mean, I don't. He's not going to play Rainer. I pulled know. up his VLR. He's it's only been Jing, queuing Gekka. Jing is going to play Rainer. Okay, so they're going to change all of their roles around. And, and you think that's a problem for it. Paper X. Look, here's how they call, okay? They literally, uh, everybody comes up with cool combinations and they literally just walk around and they're like, oh, you remember this thing we came up with? Let's try it here. That's what they do. And then they just fucking, and it works. Oh, but you're arguing for them to be like good, and then you also saying. think that they're gonna go into T. No, I'm not. I'm not saying. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, it just in the play style diff. No, 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 no. You're you were agreeing with me that they should be power ranked underneath T1, whilst arguing that they're better. No, no, no. <gasps> you're completely misunderstanding what I'm saying. I think Gosh. I am. I'm saying that T1 should be at the same level. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just... <laughs> what. <laughs> I'm getting trolled from every front. You remember when we did this thing where you were just, I, I can't even remember what it was about. What was it? An, an agent, here. an I, agent tier list and you just relentlessly yeah, trolled me. Yeah, no, sorry. please, Kurt. It's not the, not the white duck ass emotes. We have to have, we have to have this. Otherwise, okay, the and we just no don't one. have a ninth list. Yeah, where's the... <laughs> Guys, I, I'm, like... I'm, I have some real analysis. Hold on. I'm on tracker.gg. I found paper X cigarettes. Guess what agent he's been playing this act the most? Hey, 30 realist, matches, realistically 30, smoked. Guy. 30 matches of Gecko. Next closest, <laughs> 6 of Fade, 5 of Breach, 1 of everyone else, no Reyna. Last act, 73 Gecko, 14 Fade, no Reyna. Before yeah, that? That's because he likes playing Gecko. You think he's going to show what he's going to play before an event? He's on an ult <laughs> account grinding Reyna. He, the guy's right. never played Reyna. All time. All oh, time. Oh, do you life, know him personally? Can you personally vouch yeah, that he's never like done that? that? <laughs> yep, yep, I know I'm like that. 40 games of Reyna, ever. Mimi's Unless he has a secret, a secret fucking Pacific Reyna account to queue and prepare for his ultimate moment on this team. It's, I'm not uh, saying they're gonna, have to gonna... they're gonna have to revamp their roles, they're gonna have to change yeah. everything. It's they're gonna have to revamp their over. roles and their comms. I, I think Why it might be. What, can we look at this real quick? Okay, loud and first. This is a terrible Whatever. power ranking, Too by the way. fanatic. I am okay. so proud of this. Energy, uh, so I'm ignoring Paper Rex with something there. Energy's third, Liquid fourth. And, uh, above Dude, the Rx. EMEA fans are going to be mauled in that. Not, not only do we have the winners fanatic. in four. Fanatic but... should be. What argument the can Mickey you Mouse make tournament. The EMEA was a Mickey fanatic Mouse tournament. Fanatic should not be ranked on a power ranking over loud. Are, are you are you saying this seriously or just to I, stop Loud from being cursed? I'm both right now, <laughs> but both because Fnatic throughout the season looked dominant. They looked way yeah. better. What, Saving strats, whatever you want to say about Loud, blah 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 blah. Undefeated, they lose one match and then all of a sudden they don't look. We're just pretending like they aren't the most dominant team in the world. That's I think what I'm saying. They have looked invincible at times playing in the MEA region with the best teams in the world. Like, straight up, go back and look at their matches. They are like 13 3 teams over and over. It hasn't been close, guys. And yeah. if you look at lock in, that's the only argument you guys have right now, besides them losing finals. Lock in almost went 3 0 to Fnatic. True. It was very close. I think Loud are in better form than they were at lock-in. And I think that they've done more in terms of pushing the meta ahead for them and their comps than- I agree. But, so but the only, Fnatic the, is still the best team in the world. I mean, they are until proven otherwise, but I, yes. the, the power ranking to me is kind of like, I, I think it's going to prove otherwise at this event. Like, I think Loud is going to take that next step forwards. That's fair, the, to and me, they can do the, that, but weren't we just talking about like, this is the real power ranking, what they can do inside the tournament doesn't matter? Brother, you've been trolling the whole time. <laughs> uh, we were saying who gets out of group, like what group they're in doesn't matter. How but, they're going to do with the no, tournament is the whole. He's correct. I mean, no. he, he is kind of correct, yeah, right? He's like right. the best kind but, of correct. But also, I I feel like the like if you if you just base it on the previous month's tournaments or whatever, then you know it's not really a power ranking. It's just like yeah. based but on the it, data available. Ignore like, one bo three. 1BO3 well, where they could have woke me, up I sick, think, they could have done whatever, we, you don't know. But I think that I think the Fnatic being currently the best team in the world relies on you being confident they're still bringing new, interesting, better stuff to Tokyo. Why, like that, inherently why a gamble. all of a sudden, though, are you not confident that's, the, that's gonna happen? 
Because I've been thinking about the comps that they've been running on different maps, and I don't why know would which they maps show, they're going to make they, the improvements why on. Why would they show anything going into this when they've guaranteed Tokyo? They've always won everything in Europe for the last two years. They haven't lost a series, I think, in Europe or two well, seasons. Well, they have in playoffs. They they lost to Na'Vi, yeah. but but yeah. like even then, you're that good of a team. Why would you bring something out that will potentially win you an international event? When you're confident enough, you can probably win it to begin. Yeah, and I also think that they probably should have won. I mean, like if they play against Liquid enough times, they they beat Liquid. Liquid had a bit I think of a even with their old really stuff, good... they would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, but... I agree with that. But it's I I also think it is inherently even if we expect, and I I agree with you. I think Fnatic will bring new stuff. I think they will push the meta. But I think there's also kind of this like thought in the back of my mind of like, okay, it's like two weeks before the tournament starts. I'm sure they've been prepping stuff up, but it's like you kind of have to rely on thinking that, yes, this is going to happen. Yes, yes, they're going to go through with having all this new stuff to show where that they have never played an official before. Whereas for me, watching Loud throughout the entirety of America's, I feel like they were always bringing new stuff. Even in the comps they were, they've been playing, they're trying out new ideas, they're flexing. I, I think this. throughout this year, they've shown more ability to bring new ideas, to adapt, to push the meta this. than Fnatic has thus this far. This is and the it, show that we have constantly in America's League constantly said loud are not doing anything new and they're losing maps constantly and we're going to rank them lower than cloud nine as, every as single a viewer, time but then I they mean, started in doing playoffs, more stuff what do you mean and they fucking eight. showed a, a sonic on chamber map. you want two, two on maps chamber. and new stuff their haven they had new walls they new didn't ideas. play fracture a single time what do you and mean then they, they came on they looked good stuff. on fracture in the finals but who cares they, uh, you're, you're acting like that stuff was like not th that they I don't know, that that was new. They just never played that map because nobody ever challenged them in America's League. They could have literally picked that map. Just nobody did. They got... No, they... Well, they they were perma-banning it. They were banning it for the first, like, first, like four, four weeks. Yeah, but... Yeah. Just, but... But because Bind came out, they have to actually go for it, and then they only get to show it in the playoffs. But and by nobody the same narrative, then you're just assuming that they're not going to have even more stuff. I'm saying this is but it does, but then anyways, showing this something is, is indicative is of more irrelevant. Because the point I'm making is that you, you guys, you two specifically on the loud hate train the entire season, you're like, oh, well, I, not the hate train, but it's just wait, like. Wait, wait. So what you're saying is when loud don't show anything, and we say I'm annoyed they're not showing anything, and then when they do show things, and we say. Oh, it's cool it's, that they've shown it, things. You you think we should still be saying Loud haven't shown no, anything new? No, it's it's not, not, it's not that. Changed. It's not that. Oh, uh, it's that you have the fucking weapons. Goliath that is Fnatic <laughs> with four of the top eight players exactly. in the I'm world saying, on the same team. Yeah, and the other four of the top eight players are on Loud. A uh, bullshit. That's boss. I mean... Osbus, Les, fucking Tui's Kalenzin are goaded. They, I mean, they also have really It's not a super team superstars. in the same way. The it's not a super team in the same way, but I think three out of five of the loud players are I would agree absolutely on the I same would, level. And yes. I think they talk about Aspas so much that they forget, I think Les is better. And, and that may be helping right now. Change. What the fuck? Who knows? I, I think Les okay. is like the best Sentinel in the world yeah. right now. Like he's ridiculous. He is okay. in like godly form. But my it's point was, you guys were bad. so ma you, like, okay, the, 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 the ranking loud for those types of reasons, and then fucking uh, the entire season we're saying, oh, fanatic, yeah, they're gonna be great because they're saving a bunch of strats. They have a huge advantage, and then now we're just like, fuck all that shit. They're bad. They lost the grand finals. Like, blah, 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 blah. like. Fanatic should be first. Don't, Kurt, don't fucking do it. All right. Okay, listen, if you two Kurt. feel so strongly about it, we'll put Fnatic okay. at what number if, one. What if we put them it's both in number one? Reason. What if everybody's a winner? <laughs> no, 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 no. I want someone to lose. Let's, please, not the wide duck ass rankings. I can't handle it. <laughs> this is so bad. Put, put loud back. Just fucking... Uh, whatever. It's all Just right. One let's, of them. Let's put this. Let's put, perfect. Perfect. Leave it. We're done. Fuck it. Let's whatever. Put fanatic. I. I do. Can we think, put like though, three tier breaks between these two teams and everyone? No, else? we don't need to. We're done. <laughs> okay. After, we got to get to the next part. It's important. Energy. Yeah, I mean, I. I feel like there's still more of this power ranking that we have not even touched on like we just randomly put in the teams from like Honestly, seventh onwards I know EG people... are at eighth with reformed on jet i know that he's played well in a scrim against you but aside from that there's no evidence like MC, if we're go, talking about go, evidence go, 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 go. pop off go watch how many maps of eg have you watched Every all of them maps that they've played. <laughs> no have you watched or analyzed i guess i should have asked 
the correct like every definition. single one <laughs> if you no, i want you to go watch eg play pearl yeah and tell me you think that team won't be successful plugging in the duelist because yes, that is one of the hardest maps for them to play. But if you watch the way they play Pearl, they are one of the best teams in Americas, potentially the world, at defaulting on Pearl in a way that makes sense and giving themselves an out. True. But they also and on uh, no on other maps yeah. they do the same thing. They have good set plays. They have good traps that you can cycle these players in and out, and they'll still be able to do that. You still have four players that are playing exceptionally well, including Bustio. That can they have international experience? They did well before without Demon One, with a player that they deemed unnecessary to play with going into this tournament, and they should have like beat multiple teams at Lockin. So like well, at Lockin, they didn't look anywhere near as good as they were here. Yes, and they've gotten better. Like yeah, they've that's gotten the better point. With They're gonna be roster, fine. Though, too. They're gonna be fine. I think I think the proof to cope about them being good with reformed is that in the middle of the season they slotted Demon One into this system and he instantly thrived. Demon One was in the fucking was trenches in Narnia for eight. They changed LeBron the system joins entirely. high school team. High school team's better. Like, yeah, of course that's going to happen. Demon wants a monster. <laughs> yes, he's insane. But I, I'm saying that they continue to innovate and they made a system where you can slot someone like Demon 1 in and just make it instantly start to work and make it make sense. And I think yeah. that they can be able to do the same with Reformed. I think 8 is very reasonable. It's a 12-team yes. tournament. That's not a huge part. You could, that's you could not swap a high placement. Them, you could that's swap them grouped. with T1. Like, but I still think they're going to be okay. Um, yeah, I feel like we've just got a mess from 7th to 12th. Everybody just do the double thumbs up for the guarantee and we go. <laughs> we can't guarantee the power ranking. This, by the way, we've just thrown the two Chinese teams at the bottom. That's fine. I think that's fair. I haven't watched them. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I have watched them. I don't, I don't think they look that great. I think EDG could upset Paper X know something. I mean, maybe you even maybe even favor them over Paper X or something. I don't know. Uh, I think they could. I actually might favor them over Paper X. No, Paper oh? X knows something. They they will they will download <gasps> Edward Gaming so easily. That is. But not I think even... it'll be such a close map, and I could just the, see them by the, eating. Can them. we just take a moment to say this is such a silly tournament? We have two teams that are not even running their full rosters. Two Chinese teams that have not interacted. I mean, one Chinese team that's never interacted with the VCT circuit at all. This, this is this is a silly tournament I, and the, also the the teams that aren't that you wouldn't even think are being as silly navi's running this fucking being the silliest silly. they've ever been drx silly. is like we... switching players back and forth being silly. oh yeah drx we don't even know what team they're gonna run <laughs> yeah like, we don't like this in silly terms of tournament. power rankings literally this is like the there's like four teams that we need to split into two <laughs> like different yeah. versions yeah have we ever had an international tournament where nothing has gone wrong like in no. terms no, of teams? No, I don't think so. Reykjavik right. 1? No, Reykjavik 1 version 1 had a sub for Whippy. Oh, yeah. They had jammies. Jammies. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, Berlin? Wasn't Berlin fine? No, we literally missed Team Secret entirely. We had a group oh, of three yeah. teams. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Wait, what oh, happened at Champs 21? Uh, uh, apparently the Team 21? Secret... Huh? Did something bad happen at Champs 21? Yes, everybody got COVID. Oh, yeah, that was the cursed <laughs> event. <laughs> Like Team uh, Liquid had COVID for half the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Paper I mean, X had COVID at that event. Yeah. Dude was playing with a window he couldn't close in negative 35 degree weather. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the shitting disease at Istanbul was the greatest, though. Just <laughs> cycling through players because everyone's shitting their pants it was just, <laughs> just ludicrous. Just being in constant fear that you were going to get the disease that would make you poo yourself while casting was, was legendary. <laughs> Uh, um, all right, power are we, ranking. Are we happy with this? No. Are we yes. happy with this? No. Yes. Not at I'm all. not happy with this. No, no, I'm not. I think this is the worst power rankings we've ever come I, up with. But yeah. I think I'm it'll so inherently be, be the worst. I think it will always be the worst because there's just four teams that are just fucking wild cards. This is my Mona Lisa. Maybe, maybe six. I will, be, I will be remembered by this <laughs> and my top ten after I am gone. Yeah, I don't want to attach my face yeah. nor my name to this. I mean, this six, is just going to get everybody. Six out of 12 angry. teams, I don't know what to expect. Uh, attacking Soul, extremely so. EDG could be fucking uh, just perma upset team. Paper X is who knows who they're playing with. EDG, they, they have a sub. Now, obviously, DRX, like, 
it's actually like half the tournament is it doesn't yeah. you know why Stop. it's like this because nobody cares about this tournament because fanatic's gonna win it anyways oh <laughs> we, can i can let's i cook real quick okay <laughs> let's, all right, I won't no, cook. let's i mean the, we've already cooked way oh too God. hard all right let's get into the the thing that we've actually prepped the top 10 it's gonna be just as bad it might be Tokyo. worse it's gonna be worse <laughs> No, so Kurt, this said, is impossible. Kurt said that everyone is probably going to be happy because it ended up pretty well overall. I don't believe that. Yeah, Kurt That's did say that he so, was happy with the top 10. So for right those now. that don't know, we we didn't just keep this America's only with like the plat chat cronyism that we normally do. We reached out to people from every region. We tried to evenly distribute the invites. Obviously, not everybody was able to vote. But uh, we got 18 total submissions. We got three people from EMEA. We got way too many people from Americas, including uh, Latin. Well, that's because we Brazilian combined talent. regions. Let's yeah. re realistically, we combined regions. So, like, there's Latin, um, there's Brazil, and America. Yeah. And then uh, we got a couple from, we got four from Pacific. We got one Chinese caster named Alan. And we got two gl people that I put under global who are Sliggy and. TMV because they just both, watch both EMEA, everything. Both European. Both EMEA. I mean, that, that's why EMEA doesn't have as many. Because okay. they're fucking EMEA pilled. Look, dude, look at Sliggy's top talent and tell, tell me he isn't EMEA. I mean, we'll, EMEA we'll, we'll, we'll show Even everybody's top talent. Has yeah. like he put videos. Scream in his top 10 still. Oh! He was like, Scream's still the best aimer I've ever seen. We'll put him in his top 10. Wasn't this the top Master 10 Tokyo. of Tokyo? Yes, and he still put Scream in there. That's how the, that's Sliggy pilled for you. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen the top 10. Who knows? <laughs> That's uh, got to be a joke. He's like making fun of Scream at this point. I refuse to. <laughs> okay, are we ready then? Let's We're do ready. it. Are we ready Number to? 10. Uh, so, yes. how do we want to unveil this? Are we going to unveil? I'm like group just as excited votes? as everybody else. Let's start so, with group Kurt, and then go individual. Well, Kurt, let me let me be clear here. We're going through from ten to one. The entire, like all of the votes have been collected together, and this is the group decision. Yes. Yes. And then we go through the individuals afterwards. Well, yes. I think we should do the individuals what? first. Okay. No. And no, then... no, 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 no. Why did no, you no, add, no. why did you say like it's a group decision? We just fucking put our list together and it's the aggregate. It's not like I fucking agreed that Ospos is not on the top ten because I know you guys are haters. Everyone has put Aspas in the top 10. Okay, I, let's just get on with it. Yeah. Ten number best 10. Best player. Number 10 is. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> let's have a look. It is Forsaken in the 10th spot. The pillar of Paper X, never wavering with his impact, has been one that adjusted his role out of the big three of Paper X, resulting in more options comp wise for Paper Rex to choose, says Astare. Uh, one of the casters for the Pacific region. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with this one. I think Forsaken's been in rare form, and he's been one of the biggest reasons that this team is functioning as a team instead of just running around fragging. They, he plays such a crucial role to set people up. Nasty. And his versatility right now is uh, fucking Unmatched. wild. And so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fine with I'm fine with the top ten for Forsaken. Yeah. I I'm mean, he's he's contributing ideas to the team. I he's just... helping to get new players implemented. He's playing any role that they need of him possible. Like, and he's still uh, it's crazy because he, he just still puts up like pretty much the same numbers he did when he was playing duelists. He's still yeah. just as insane. Yeah. I'm just very concerned because uh, Forsaken tenth here. Something got to be up in here. Jing, where's he at? You know, like I'm. I'm I, I probably have. You think? No, you no, think no. Jing's higher rated than Forsaken? No, I think Tony Forsaken should rest. be higher. But right. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think in general, people are higher on Jing than they are yeah. of Forsaken right now. Where? Where myself. is Divai, by the way? Divai's not on the top ten. Okay, let's go ninth. We'll move on from Forsaken. Remember that this is an insanely stacked. Insane. Yeah. The talent at this system. event is crazy. This 60 is like, players. This is really 10 through 20 me. is ridiculous. No, it wasn't easy for you. Let's roll out number oh, nine. Wow. Number nine player at Masters Tokyo is Alpha Yeah. What? That's this is so crazy. High. Why? A lot of people thought he should be way lower. He should be way lower. Okay, let, let's get to the discussion in a second. Let me read out what Yinsu said. A lot of people thought he's still upgradable, but I think he proved everybody wrong. Hey. Man's been instrumental in Fnatic's success this year. Now, That's I Shane also want to... at us, by the way, because we had the conversation about is there any <laughs> is there any player on Fnatic that can be upgraded? And we're like, Alpha here because he's playing a Sentinel and he's... But 
Dude, I mean, I, I would still agree with that. I feel like there's still moments where I, I'm actually with... Dude, I don't even know which one of you I'm with, but I think this is a bit too high for Alpha yet. I would still have him in my top 20, but I would have him Dude, significantly he's a, lower down. He's farming. He, like, consistently, you see him in fucking 1v3 situations that he has no place in getting any of the kills, and he gets all three. Just constantly. The guy is... Yeah, but he also, he also loses he rounds for Fnatic. Yeah. Fnatic like, has never lost rounds. <laughs> but the, the one time I've seen them lose a round, it was because Alpha maybe gets a little bit too silly. It it happens sometimes. Like, it's okay. They're Remember. so bored of winning. Oh. They're not focused in any of these matches because they're that far ahead of everyone. He is insane, though. He is absolutely ludicrous. Like... I understand the shade that Yinsu sent in our way because he's also one of the highest rated players that played in EMEA. But the reason the reason that he's higher rated than everybody else is because he's farming. Box. No, because he was subbed Farming out at box. the beginning because he wasn't available, and the rest of Fnatic played with Kamek and weren't quite as dominant at the beginning. So their stats all got lowered a little bit, and that's why Alpha looks like he's the best in the tournament because he fucking only played with top the other player. Goals. Top player in tournament misses two matches. Top player still puts up top stats, but because other players don't put up top stats, he is not a top <laughs> player anymore. So no, I, I guess it's that, like I'm, God, I'm just I saying. I can love his stats, MC. Dude, his stats are better, therefore he's on top isn't a reasonable argument. Like, but, but here's the thing, you, you, you do you're you're alpha alpha you're alpha He's alpha, alpha year. I know he's alpha, yeah, he's a great player. Just watch, alpha okay, way, just... I think this is a bit too high. Look at just the stats, I don't think I had him in my top 10, but just look at like the stats for just the playoffs. Like finals, they lose to Liquid, he's the player who shows up the most, who is saving them in ridiculous amounts of rounds. Like, he is crazy consistent at just pulling back rounds that should not be possible for this team but he is also on a team where th there are four superstars and for that reason i found it so hard to evaluate where in the top 10 the fanatic players could be because they all look so incredible that it's hard to point out like this is the greatest or this is how they stack up individually yeah okay Heated discussion. I'm sure we won't have any more of those. <laughs> so let's take a look at number eight. Eighth best player at Masters Tokyo, as defined by our 18 consultants, is Chronicle. The first player to win two international trophies, bound to win another. His world-class form hasn't diminished an in since lock-in, says Mimi. Mimi, spit. Go Bro, further. Chronicle? Oh my god, he's just been so fucking good man like the the support first off just as a supportive player his initiator utility seems to always be perfect he's so good at just like quickly rotating being in the right place to just throw something to support one of his side anchors and when he switches over when he plays the viper he's just as incredible on an anchor of his own the the clutches he wins his teammates just can't believe what he's doing he He's just looked unstoppable throughout EMEA. His roles are extremely flexible. His utility usage on all of them are excellent. I, I, I mean, he's he's just he's just fantastic. He's probably like he might be like best in role or one of best in role. He's he's so close to the top for just flex players. He's not even the best in role on this team, but okay. <laughs> that's, dude, that's crazy. I mean, it's also true. Yeah, but, true. Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, yeah, I, Chronicle's a beast of a player. He actually, I, I had him like just outside my top 10, but he was one of the players that I was agonizing about. You do have about. no Fnatic players in your top. This guy just hates no, of Fnatic. of course I did, of course I did. Hates Alphier, hates Chronicle, not top no, 10 players. Top 21 again, <laughs> crazy. I can't wait. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't no, 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 wait no, no. for what's coming. I had, two, I had two Fnatic players in my top 10, but I didn't have them like all up there. I think they're a crazy good team, but... Chronicle's one of those players to me that is in he's he's got an absurdly excellent performance, but there's just so many incredible players at this event. Like he's just one of those players that to me got muscled out by other ludicrously good players. But he yeah, he's insane and I think he deserves a spot in like around this position. Sure. I'm not I'm not hitting on this too hard. I don't think anyone has Chronicle like way further up the list than this. I definitely one, right? put him too high in my list, but not not absurdly so. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay. All right, let's move on to number seven then. The seventh best player at Masters Tokyo. The experts are in. It's safe from Team Liquid. 
Safe has hard carried Liquid's ass all season. He is the only being on the planet capable of keeping Redgar's UNICEF level <laughs> feeds in check. God bless him for the inhuman <laughs> effort. Is what I wrote. Inhumanitarian is what you meant to write. Sure, yeah. inhumanitarian effort. The, <laughs> dude, safe also from an IGLing perspective is where I'm talking about that too, because yes. you were talking about it a few weeks ago, Barlad, the like one of the reasons that you even watched the game when Harmy was in yep. was to see what the difference was. Man, it's so fun watching safe play, but I'm very confident too that he's brought much more than just his duelist play to this yep, team. Yep. That that moment got shut out because our internet died and it will never be seen again. But yeah, safe. If it wasn't for safe, Team Liquid would be uh, rank twelve uh, in this. Ah, uh, not twelfth, but yeah, they, they would, would not be the team they are. Yeah. Uh, they, biggest thing, knowing a little bit more about teams on the inside, is I've heard that safe. You guys are speculating like he does help a ton. He like. He's very communicative. He uh, talks a lot. He helps in like intangible ways on that team. And you guys saw it when he didn't play that match. That it's like it's a completely different team for a reason. That uh, like impact wise, I would compare him to you know a Leaf because I know what Leaf brings in terms yeah. of helping out just in general. This team. Yeah, and honestly, he's the about reason why they turned too. around too. Like yeah. the just insane impacts in games where yeah, I thought they were losing. And if it wasn't for those, they would have started like 0-4 or something. In the league. I mean, they, and, they've talked about in interviews like during the regular season that they were having like some kind of like internal issues or trying to like figure out how they wanted to like have their calling structure work, how they wanted to fit these voices into the team. But it seems like they really figured it out in yeah. playoffs. I, I think you can, I mean, you can just like see when he's, how much this guy's talking when he's in game. You can kind of tell from positions again that it's probably him calling a lot of these like mid rounds, spotting a timing, spotting a gap, something like that having a player like that that is just so incredibly proactive and also so skilled is such an asset to a team i think the leave comparison is very apt well let's move on then number six the sixth best player in tokyo edging out safe is something pepe laugh Dominated the Japanese circuit, picked up by PaperX, and started dominating the top teams in the APAC in the span of a few months. A pliable, adaptable, absolutely cracked star. And MC didn't have him on the list because you don't he, think he's going to play he's in going Tokyo, to Tokyo. Which, yeah. which is quite reasonable, really, to leave him off the list if that's what you think. But I think if you were going to place him, do you agree with this? Like, if yeah, he was I think, playing? I think he's definitely in the top 10. Um, I think, yeah. it, pure impact wise, he is the reason. Like, you say Forsaken has had a lot of impact, which he has, Devi is playing well. But like, all of that is unlocked because you have a player like something. Uh, plain and simple. Like, if they have a mediocre duelist player, I don't think they look this good. Uh, but, like, everybody else has looked better and better on this team because you have somebody that is as talented as something. And if it wasn't for him, this team wouldn't be able to go back to this chaos and insane, like, speed yeah. and pace and stuff like that because... Forsaken was slowing down way too much. And we saw that in the beginning of the season. We saw that lock in as well. Just way too much of a difference. And they tried to keep up with that. But because something can now take all the attention from a team while literally going on one side of the map by himself as Reyna, like that that changes everything for their play style. And on the I think it's a little high still for him because this is going to be his first showing at a massive global competition if he does end up playing. And I just don't like one of the reasons I'm okay with the Chronicle thing is like the experience just bo boosts him so much and something has like none of that despite mm -hmm. winning in the grand finals despite playing very well that's not the same but, as playing at a global land at some Masters. point though they do start to get a lot more similar I feel like this year playing in like playing at land constantly in Pacific and then playing on stage remember that the Pacific one is in front of a crowd with like big lights on you a yeah. lot of a spectacle happening Playing in that grand finals uh, for something has got to be quite similar to playing in you know sure, but the it's, early it's rounds one. of groups it's, and playoffs it's and stuff at Masters. It's, it's also not Japan. Do you not remember the show match or whatever, <laughs> the first Japanese crowd they had? This yeah. event's going to be bonkers in terms but of like... It's also not as large of a... It's not like that sized arena, right? I can't remember, but I, I remember that, venue. that show match was like 16,000 yes. person crowd. It's like but half that. Even if... then, the crowd was so into it. It's like, you know, Brazil sure. 2.0 when Loud is playing. That like, it's going to be exciting. I really hope it's going to be exciting. And like, 
playing in front of a smaller audience or like you know the america's one is the only one i can say and like our crowd was loud in a lot of moments like i'm sitting with white noise on away from the stage and i can hear when people are like yelling and getting excited so like that's adrenaline wise will like bother you in those matches i can't imagine as a player going from like most of the time a lot of these players have never played in front of a crowd or like an active crowd or like anything like that like i don't think it's going to compare to what they're going to see in Japan. that's fair but uh yeah i don't know i i think he's, he's had some of that experience i also from his time playing in japan i i wonder if the crowd will kind of rally behind this paper x team since there's obviously no japanese team coming i could see it he he played in japan a lot i'm sure he has a lot of fans over there and it's just a very likable team so i could see paper x especially if he goes being a big fan plays. favorite if he plays yeah yeah i, I also <clears throat> it's not like he just performed well at the top level in pacific he dicked everybody down he absolutely flattened the top players in the league. Like, for example, you look at the grand finals performance from uh, from Marco. Uh, do, 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 do. The only players that were fragging well against Marco is Forsaken went plus six against Marco in the grand final. Something went plus 13 against Marco in the grand final. Plus 10 against RB. He's like, he's farming some of the most consistent players in the region and that's going to take head to head superb. fights against them a lot of times yeah like just straight just up. like straight up dueling yeah. them. he's a god he's a god like honestly i could see him in uh, the end of the year or next year being being up there with aspas you know that that's the level that i see him achieving just right now i think sure. six it's without without seeing yeah i think it's a little too early but this is still fine like yeah, obviously his yeah. performance was nasty good yeah all right, let's go on to the number five player. So now we're talking top five. So these really are the elite of the elite. Number five, Masters Tokyo player, Marco. When the nukes go off, the AI overlords take over and civilization as we know it comes to an end. The one pillar of humanity remaining will be Marco continuing to play well. So <laughs> this is a great quote. TMV. <laughs> He probably is the most consistent player of all time, though, right? Like, it, I can't think of a single tournament that he's played badly. Yep. It, it just doesn't happen. Good. He's consistently just absurd as a side anchor. The clutches he wins is ridiculous. He kept it up through their run in Pacific. No matter what Ross or DRX is, ha is playing with, no matter what struggles they're having, he is always pulling it off he's probably like the most experienced or one of just the most experienced land players period he's played so many international events i mean it would just honestly be unthinkable for him to not be a top 10 top five player yeah, at an international I event i don't think i also feel like he's not even playing his best right now Agreed. and he's still and it was still great at that level yeah so I'm trying to uh, uh, think if I have. He also has a history of playing remember. better at land and like stepping up at the big events. Yeah, he has a history of putting and topping his own performances as the best controller performances of all time, like over yeah. and over and over. Like, yeah. yeah. He sets his own benchmarks on the roll. Uh, all right, let's move on to number four then. The fourth best player. We still Masters have no Tokyo. America's players listed, by the way. Oh, don't worry. We have no America's players. Wait, wait, wait. 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 There's, there's not even. <laughs> okay not um, yet not yet is what i'm trying to say yeah That's not in the crazy. entire top 10 but we haven't from 10 through 5 we haven't seen a single america's player no that's i that's had wild. nothing to do wait this. what i had nothing that's insane to do this. <laughs> surely this is an america's player Dude, well course. let's have a look oh, at the number four position we have no. leo has a lineup for literally everything hands down the best initiator in the world right now says tom biz and i yeah, I, I agree. He is an absolute elite talent. I mean, I can't think of a player that's a more all-round package, to be honest. Like, everything. The utility usage is always perfect. His team play, the way that he plays off people, is like rifle <laughs> little like movement taps are super and good. Why was the Aslan highlight being played? It was uh, I think because he spilled his water all over himself. Water. Oh, okay. <laughs> he like he drank his water and just spilled it all down. It's his like front. surprise. <laughs> Aslan is number three. <laughs> <laughs> he snuck in there. Yeah, uh, Leo has also just been really good when he shows up to land as well. He was I, their best player of lock in. Honestly, I think he was uh, should have been the MVP of that event. I don't know if he actually he ended was. up being so. Yeah, yeah probably. Uh, I mean, the the guy's just ridiculous. I, I his when he plays Sova. He seems to have a perfect shock dart 
for everything. Uh, no matter what agent he's playing, he always has well-timed support utility. I mean, I'm glad both him and Chronicle are in this top 10 together because those two as just like supportive players, I, I don't think you could ask for anyone better really in, in those roles to be supporting your players, your side anchors, your starter list, whatever. And also just be winning so many late rounds just with ridiculous individual form. Well, who is better than Leo? Let's check out the top three. The third I'm best player- I'm already so mad, by the way. At Masters <laughs> Tokyo. <laughs> The third best player of Masters Tokyo is okay. less. I was yes, real we concerned. finally got an America's I was Holy real shit. concerned for a minute. Holy I was like, there's finally, no way they don't put this guy in a top 10. We finally have an America's player. Maybe the most clutch player in the world right now. Rolled face in playoffs, says Paper Thin. Yeah, Les has just been in unbelievable form. Like, I think he was also their best player at uh, lock-in, wasn't he? Uh, I feel like he was. Yeah, he was up there. Yeah. He was definitely at Champs last year when they won. Yeah. He's Especially been their the best player the whole time. He was a record. He just gets overshadowed launched. a lot because Allspots yeah. is just so it's flashy because and flashy. ridiculously good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't it's, he it's also really wasn't that great when he played Chamber. Like, the Chamber meta was his one-off meta, didn't I feel. They did play Chamber that much. Though. Yeah, he less, did. yeah, it was like one tournament. It was like Copenhagen for a while. Yeah. And, and that was their worst tournament. Well, yeah, that was the one time they got knocked out because their group yeah. was just absurd. Yeah, they played. They, they played. Twice. They played the anti-loud, who has more wins against loud than anybody else put together in the world, <laughs> and then optic. So, yeah, um, yeah, less demon, fantastic. I'm molding now though because I'm realizing as we get deeper and deeper that one of my players that I put right up towards the top is not even in the top ten list. Yep. How do you and, know? Yep. How do you know? How do you know? It's gonna be Dirk and Ausbus. It's gonna be Dirk and Ausbus. All right, all right. All right, show show me Ausbus. Number two, show me Ausbus. Says Mimi. Oh, it's Dirk. Durka. <laughs> <laughs> Durka is a warrior. He takes the fights his team needs. He never backs down, and he wins so often it's unfair. He's simply better than everyone else on every other team. I gotta take a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I mean, I literally said in the quote, he's simply better than every player on every other team. Which so, seems to be number as two. As he's number two. I, yeah, I mean, I think you can uh, see where I had him. I actually did have him at number two. I had somebody on his own team above him. <laughs> <laughs> he is my number two as well. Right. So we're molding about him being at number two while we all have him at number two. Yes. I have reasons, though. The rest of you do. I mean, how do you know? We might have reasons. Not as good as mine. What's your reason? Okay. What's your reason? I can't. Once we go to the top, the individual. All right. Ones, you'll okay. 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 Fair enough. I mean, Durka is a phenomenal player, right? Yes. He deserves to be up in the in the like absolute upper echelon. Another player who's just never had a bad tournament to fucking like the first ever land to now. He has been consistently insane and continues to improve as a player each and every event. I I feel like you don't ever see rounds where he overheats or looks silly or does anything like that. He's just. He's, he's, he's so good. This he's might incredible. not Actually, uh, attest to your point here, Mimi. He actually uses his <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is him. <laughs> oh. Accidentally <laughs> fat in his ult and he kills safe for Okay, he anyway. looks silly this one time. He still gets the kill, though. silly here. Yeah. <laughs> Calculated. <laughs> Economy damage. Uh, uh, all right, let's take a look then. The number one player, as voted by a panel of 18 so-called experts, the number one player at Masters Tokyo is Aspas. You can call him a one-trick player, but he can destroy you with that trick. <laughs> a magician who can change the outcome of a match and a series, says Alan. Uh, he, he was the best player throughout uh, the regular season, I would say, of VCT Americas. And then uh, in playoffs, I feel like it was great to see him just showcases amazing rays again and also neon neon yeah i mean he, his jet is insane but i i like that we actually got to see more agents from him. that's one of the big reasons where i was like super hype on loud coming into this event because it's like oh finally we're getting to see osbus's rays get him get to see him flex around but I, I mean even when he is just playing the jet it's ridiculous he he just makes jet look like the best side anchor in the game like yep. some of some of the rounds that he pulled off just like holding a on split are absurd he has such a a fantastic just like innate understanding of how to use his utility he'll get out of situations never seemingly has to use his dash to do so 
and his mechanics are just consistently insane when this team struggled in the group stage when they would lose a map or something it would be him to pull up on map two and drop like 40 to to rally it back is the best movement i think most like a lot of the jet players are trying to emulate mostly him right now yeah yeah in terms of movement and stuff and also you can use the op like a shotgun so that's cool yeah, yeah. Well, yes, I mean, a yeah. shorty and a sh and an op there cool. there's a lot of jet players that don't use the smoke well i think aspis is probably the best in the world at playing around the smoke and using it in a way other than like hitting a button as an oh shit button as a jet like he is very calculated in how he uses the cloud burst that like by far one of the best in the world like people will learn from him and like as we said they're emulating like how he is playing the map as a pseudo sentinel on some of these uh like yeah. bomb sites i think the best way to describe him is it just he looks intentional in every movie yes. does when you compare him to some of the other like top stars like i think of like something um for example uh he'll be like okay we're i'm gonna like push ct with a rain or do something ridiculous Osbus, on the other hand it's just like every move seems like calculated coordinated with his team like he just he it seems as though he thinks so much in like every action he makes yet it's yep. always so quick and so innate it, it it's just incredibly impressive, and I don't see that slowing down uh, in Tokyo. So that's our collated, organized top 10 list. Now, I had two players from my top 10 list that didn't make it. I don't want to start with me, though. I want to start with the resident troll, so I think. The, the, player, way, uh, right? so oh, the yeah? way it's formatted this time is that it's all in one nice oh. looking setup so we should oh, probably just look at oh, it we can compare each other directly i'm so fucked <laughs> <laughs> it's over just give me a, uh, I wanna, give me a moment okay all right i want to start by getting mce your thoughts on how you built your ranking because wait, it sounds wait, 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 like wait. you have taken a unique approach Go ahead, Kurt. Yeah. I just wanted to interrupt real quick because I think what viewers might be more curious about off the rip is who was number 11, who was number 12, like the overall mm, okay. overall ranking. All so right, we're going to yeah, take a look at that first. Okay. Uh, I have to figure out my computer. Uh, but when I do... <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, so number 11 was Crashies. Number 12, Devi. Wow. Boaster, 13. Boaster. Boaster. Boaster's really high up there. I mean, he so was playing MP... quite well in playoffs. Don't know Boaster why. Had but also boats. troll. I don't Boaster know why Boaster's got... so Dude, high. He got... He... MC put him in first, bro. He put him in first. Yinsu and someone else put him in first. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> and then we've got Sagetsu and Shao, the two players that just <laughs> always turn up for Na'Vi no matter what. Nats there too. Maybe a little underrated, honestly, in my opinion. Only Nats two of us put Nats. Uh, oh, wait, so that shows you how many people had yeah. them in the top 10 so list Boaster on the right. almost made the top 10 with two votes. That's crazy, actually. <laughs> and the fact that only two people had Nats in the top 10. But also, I, I'm saying he was underrated. He missed out on my top 10. I had him at 11th. So, yeah, I mean, for those kind of players, it's really difficult. Because... Can we squat to the top? How many did... Was it 18 out of 18 for Aspas? Yeah, yeah. Aspas is the only player... Who didn't put Durka and who didn't put Les in their top 10? That's egregious. That is I, actually I blame egregious. Bala. I blame Bren. Me? There were three people who didn't put Leo. Oh, no. Oh, that's... Three! Uh, also, there fun. was... I so... have my reasons. Oh, One... no. One little fun yeah, fact on. before we get, move on is that Crashies was in the top 10, but someone submitted their um, preds as I was working on this at like 5.30 in the morning, and it bumped Forsaken up to 10. Ah. Uh, so, uh, By the way, 10 I, votes for Crashies, yeah, yet not in the top 10. 10 votes for Crashies. 10 so. out of 18 people. Deservedly so. Yeah, Crashies, yeah, I, mean, I, I was struggling to where to put crashes i don't think i put him in my top 10 but this honestly he this spreadsheet is so cool because it actually shows you like more detail than the ranking itself in terms of like who is you know brought up over yeah. and over and over again in people's minds even if they didn't quite get in there and there's like big drop-offs right like aspas lurker uh, aspas durka less leo and then there's quite a sizable drop-off in point totals what's to crazy. mako Sugetsu had three votes total. Sugetsu. I mean, Sugetsu's 
been playing well, but Navi have been playing pretty bad, badly. I think that's an so indicator. I, I mean, he's been Navi's best player throughout EMA yeah. by far. He's been saving them from Only so many ridiculous three. situations. But it's still, you have to keep the team in mind. He didn't make yeah. my list, but he he was like top fifteen for that's me. I think. Crazy. Yeah, same. Me, I had him in the top fifteen. All right, let's let's take a look then at the individual rankings. Can we, Kurt? Um, I do. You're dropping hints that you had some insane system. Though, Have you guys not figured it out yet? What? You're just not putting any America's players in there? Or no, you built it backwards? Or you put all the IGLs players. in the I top? Have, or I have America's what, players. What did you do? Part, part of mine was the most influential people for them to win, for them to like... MVP it was top style. players and MVP style of each individual team or whatever for that team to show success. Wait. Whoa, 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 explain that again, because you've put Bo Boaster as the best player at Masters Tokyo. Yes. Me and, okay. I'm guessing, Yinsu put Boaster as the Wait, best player. Wait, but that player. means Yinsu didn't put him as the best. Where did Yinsu put him? Who, Wait, who guys, else put him why up there, Why are you guys then? saying that? What? I'm not saying that. That was Mimi. <laughs> what? I mean, Where's I'm, Boaster? Oh, Alan. Alan. Okay. Alan. Alan's, Alan's put him at number I just, four. We just assumed it was Yinsu as one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. so no, so no explain shit. again. Explain again. Boaster These, number one. Yes. I think if Fnatic wants to win this title, it rests on his shoulder. I think if he continues to have the performances he's had across the season and just this year in general, they will win the title. Because mm. he is a perfect 1v1 rate of everybody True. in EMEA. He has continued to call well, to be a mood guy, to be whatever. And I think he is the single, like... Most important thing if Fnatic wants to win this tournament for them to win. And I have to curse Fnatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've also got uh, Crashies at number five there too. Yes. I mean, as does uh, Dryad and some other people have got him pretty high up the list. He, he made it into 11th. Do you want to just speak about Crashies? Because he's phenomenal, but we haven't really talked Crashies about him. Crashies is the reason that Leaf isn't on this list. Like, realistically, if Crashies did not have the series that he had, energy doesn't go to Tokyo. Sure. Like, straight up. And that is the easiest way to say it, that one player having the amount of impact that all you've heard about energy the entire year is like, oh, you know, how good uh, Victor is doing, how good Artis is doing, like, how good these players... Somehow people have forgot that Crashies is one of the best players and initiators in the world. Yep. And I don't understand how that's possible. Like, he may be the single most influential player on energy with FNS. Yep. And, like, his individual level has always been good. And people are just like, nah, don't care anymore. Like, I don't get that. I think people have just, like, gotten used to it. It's like, yeah. you, you watch this team and he's just, oh, they're in a tough spot. Crashies is going to win a win a 1v2. Oh, they're playing defense. He's going to have really well-timed Sky Utility, despite being in, like, the solo initiator meta, to be able to constantly give them yeah. the right information. Like, I think... Crashies as an initiator is one of the reasons why people put like finesse on such a pedestal. Finesse yes. is an amazing caller, but you need a player like Crashies to call as well as he does. And Crashies is so consistently providing such great information for this team in the mid round and just winning them also in the late round on just individual performance with the picks he can get. He, I feel like he might be the like best guy player in America's. I think I do rate him as the, I mean. He's Leaf, Cowanzine. Yeah. He, he's at least I mean, very Cowan high up there. Zine's insane. Yeah, Cowanzine is also uh, insane. So which probably didn't Zine, make anyone's list, I don't think. No, it made my list extremely high up. I think Cowanzine is insanely good. And I had him rated... I had Aspas as the third best player on Loud. Because I feel like Les and Cowanzine are that impactful to the way that this team plays. I think having Cowanzine as the solo initiator on this team... Like, to me, initiators are one of the most important players in the meta currently. Because if you have somebody that just pisses away all of their utility or doesn't really understand what they're doing, it it falls to pieces. The whole system just falls to pieces. So, when, and when I look at people like, like Crashies, for example, and the impact that he has in the game, and then Cowanzine, the way that he's winning, like, 1v3s and finding them picks in crucial situations and is able to get up aggressive with Aspas and help him and then drop back and be able to play safely as well. Like, I think he's an absolutely insane player. He's nuts. Yeah. So I've got, like, I've got a lot of initiated players on my list. Like, I've got Leo number one and Cowanzine in there, Crashies in there as well. Basically. I just think it's an initiator meta despite not having double yeah. initiator. Uh, I think also we were we were talking about that like 
just like fat chesting about Osboss's movement, but the amount of clutches that Cowan Zine has won, where he just movement diffs oh, in a 1v2, is absurd. So everybody He's allowed, incredible. Yeah. 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 Furia too, weirdly enough, even though they don't the, like- The Brazilian you know, movement goes crazy. <laughs> Brazilian movement's nuts. Yeah. Um, I want to try and find the troll picks. I'm scanning Hi. for troll picks. Hello, look at me. Wait, let's have a look at Bala. So Aspas number one, Durka, Leo, Sagetsu, really high right. up there. But I feel like Sagetsu's been yeah. a he's nasty, good. nasty yeah, he's man. still a top player. Foxy nine ranked <laughs> <No>. eight. <laughs> No. Above something who, I mean, something was just diffed Foxy9, I think, this season. No? What's your justification there? Uh, I didn't diff him the entire season. But yeah, I mean, they didn't really. Only when it mattered. Play with, yeah, except for the upper bracket <laughs> final. Um, Foxy9 has, like, impressed me so much in the beginning of the season as having the best raise movement out of anybody. Um, and also some of the best jet movement, too. And I rate that very, very highly. And honestly, I put it comparable to Aspas. It's maybe a little bit more random, but it's also way more, way, way more, like, on the fly, in, like, um, fluid in the sense that, like, stuff is just stringing together, like, left and right. Um, and because of that, like, I, I got super Foxy9 pilled. But... Uh, I didn't watch the grand finals until the other day, and I would actually swap Buzz in for for him and move something above both of them. Um, but because of Buzz playing on Jet in the last grand finals, it just reminded me of how fucking good that guy was. Yeah, Buzz is insane. Uh, so yeah, that that's really my is. like biggest like what the fuck am I do what what am I thinking moment. Uh, I I also want to point out that Alan has Kang Kang at uh, number ten and. And life. I, I, and I think, oh, and life is in there as well. I mean, yeah. they're both sick players, but yeah. they also they're not going to be in the talented. tournament long enough, in my opinion, to warrant those positions. Right. But I mean, we did see Kankan, like, what, do you remember winning 1v3 to all the players on 100 Thieves while they, the rest but of the team was I mean, I, I think what's away. the most <laughs> egregious about Ellen's list is Kung Kung below life, in my opinion. I think, like, we've seen, like, Kung Kung, like, just diff life and come out and look ridiculous in all of the series they've played. I think it's so cool that they're on opposite teams now, even yeah. though yeah, it's sick. they were. Yeah, anyways. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, I I'm sure I put Leo way too of... low. Leo was my number nine. I regret that immensely. I think I had you Chronicle know, too high and Leo too low. If I would go back, I would kind of switch around where those two were. I just want to point out, you remember when we were talking about Durke didn't make some Oh yeah, who is Oh that? yeah. Who was that? Acer. Let's Oh. <laughs> just I mean that's <laughs> That's just got surely that's just an oversight though. And I'm a point. huge Saya player. Although I mean but this list is You are not for... you are not including Durke. Which is yeah. fair because Fnatic's so good that who cares? Like they're going to win anyways. <laughs> Wait, does he not they, have a single? They don't fanatic? win without Alfie. Alfie is his only fanatic player. Yeah. Yeah, because I none mean, of like, based SCA based. Um, they're mad at Plat Chat for not paying attention to APAC, so they're just ignoring the best team in the world. <laughs> Brent, yeah, has, or, Brent, I think, is the only artist picker on this list. Yeah. Are there any I other been... artist enjoyers? No. I feel like. So I was looking at uh, Sliggy's uh, list as well when he had. Um, he had a list that he posted on uh, a video that he made about Tokyo, which is different to this list, where he had, I think, CNED in 10th or something, and he had Devai extremely high up. Yeah. He's, he's gone into the more, like, normal picks here, I think, a little. But it is, it is worth saying, I think, just because we've kind of, we're wrapping up here, I think, with the rankings. I just want to give us a moment to talk about, like, which player is going to be somebody that hasn't performed particularly well in the season? Like, doesn't justify a, a a placement in one of our lists, but could if the team has a shift or if they find their old form or something like that. Like, which team, which players should we be keeping our eyes on that could be like the top 21 player where they just come out of nowhere and they just go nuts? Reformed. <laughs> Uh, I mean, <laughs> we've already heard the reasons from you, so like, like Dude, I, I don't even know what to say about that. None of us can even comment because we haven't watched him in scrims. We're just at your mercy. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the teams who are like 
I could see maybe, I don't think a lot of people put Victor, but I thought Victor yeah. was really yeah. instrumental in NRG's comeback. Um, when they were switching to make everyone else more comfortable, he's still the player who's having to play a bazillion roles, bounce around, looks good on all of them, super consistent in his performance. I think he had like yeah. one or two off games in playoffs where the rest of his yeah. team stepped up, which is why he was off a lot of other people's, a lot of people's lists. But if he hadn't had those two bad games, I think he would have been in way more of these top 10s. For me, I had him, I think, like 12 or 13. Like, he just barely didn't I mean, make it, in my opinion. But it was really him and Crashies that saved Energy's run. Yeah, he would have been, like, top six, top five if he continued his regular season performance. At the end, yeah. And yeah. I could I could very well see him coming into Tokyo and, and doing so. Yeah. Well, uh, Som is another there, one there for can't be Oh, Som, absolutely. I mean, Som has... Did anyone have Som on their like, list? He would have been use. he would have been in my like top fifty. Yeah. Because uh, if you look at clutch rate alone, like uh his clutch rate is absurdly high too. And like he has been a lockdown anchor for that team the entire season. I yeah. think he got a lot of flat coming into this because you're looking at a replacement for Marv, and you know Marv is the Iceman and you know, whatever. Som has played outrageously good yeah, yeah. throughout the entire season. And yeah, remember how good Som was at lock-in, too. Like, he was ridiculous in that event for NRG. Even though they didn't make an insanely deep run, it, for his, like, first I mean, big LAN, for, like, the pressure of playing against Loud on their home stage, he just performed yeah. so well. They also did kind of make a really, like, very good run. They they, 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 eight, they, lost, they, they, they were, lost. They were top eight. eight. They were one step away from making... It was that crazy one game. shot away from... Yeah, they had three match points to be able to make yeah. it into top four and potentially go deeper. So, I mean, yeah. like, you can't hold that against them. Sure. They, were, they were in an insane position. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about, like, Na'Vi. It really is. Like, to me, Na'Vi is the team that is currently performing way worse than you would expect from Na'Vi. And I hate doubting Na'Vi because they always have extra comps cooked up in the background. They always have done in the past. And the players can just be suddenly in outrageous form. Like, Sean yep. Segetsu is still looking insane. But if CNET suddenly, like, decides to play Perma Jet and they yeah. play meta comps, like, are you telling me CNET's not going to start farming people? CNET he is. was insane at locking. Yeah. Like, he was so good at locking. I, I he think... just doesn't look that great at the moment because they're, pl they're, they're like, playing Omen Yoru, bro. Like... Yeah, it's <laughs> like... Messy. Messy. Yeah. All right, well... That does it for our top 10 list. I'm sure we've left everybody completely satisfied with our process and been, you know, this is perfectly the diligent in mentioning the everybody. Ever. Really? Me yeah. Me too. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I, this, I, I worked the hardest this on this one. This was, a top 10 made it even harder, I feel, than top 20. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was challenging. But also, shout out to all 18 of the people who came and contributed cool. and gave us their top 10 uh, so that we can have free content. Thanks, guys. Uh, this takes us to our final segment, the most important segment. It's why it's weekly award. It's why it's weekly award. <laughs> Do you always watch these without sound? No. Uh, <laughs> Usually they have sound for us. Oh, I have no sorry. idea. Because I was like, said. I was like, that's way better. Like, if you guys just have no idea what Wyatt has said during any of this, I mean, so that's time. incredible. For a long time, all the remote guests couldn't hear it. So yeah. okay. we just, okay. yeah. I, I don't know what he was doing there with the poor bobblehead, but yeah. <laughs> all he said good. was, it's Wyatt's weekly award. Oh. And he just Perfect. starts slapping his head. Okay. Um, I'm, so last week we picked the, the stupid fucking cheese rolling competition. <laughs> So this week, I'm actually going to pick, like, a player. I'm going to pick a player from VCT from those matches where we should have nominated them instead. I mean, we probably should pick somebody to go and replace the cheese rolling people, but fuck that. We'll just pick one. I'm going to go with... I, I'm going to pick something. I think something deserves the Wyatt's Weekly Award. He's a rookie player that's come in after dominating the Japanese Tier 2 division. You'd never know really how good those players are going to be when they've just been farming in a lower league. Like, do they have, you know, difficulty adapting to the big time? Do they have problems with their experience level? Do they make too many mistakes? Like, you, you hear the comments of the Paper X team. He, he's often the one that's trying to calm them down and make sure that they play their advantages. And he's very vocal in terms of telling other people to give him certain utility. He does sometimes, you know, ignore the rest of his team and just play off his own timings and shit. But the fact that he's literally stomped the rest of Pacific and won't make Tokyo, it's tragic in the same way that the Demon 1 situation is tragic, except 
kind of more so, if anything, because he was just playing in Japan. Mm. He just had a visa to play there. My dude was literally smurfing in Japan. There's a tournament in Japan. He can't play. My heart goes out to him. And also, he's just been putting up such beastly performances that, yeah, there you go. You get the Wyatt's Weekly Award, even if you can't win a trophy with the rest of your team, unfortunately, which I'm sure you'll appreciate the bobblehead more at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and on top of that, too, Happy Pride Month, everybody out there that's uh, that's Woo! celebrating Pride Month. It's it's Pride Month every day over here in Plaid Chat. I mean, I don't really know what that sentence means. But, but, <laughs> that's, 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 Guys, we're never, changing the Plaid Chat logo to be a rainbow so we can do never corporate a, Activision. Activision. There's never a bad time to celebrate being part of the LGBT community. I have tons of people in the community that are in my chat and Brent's chat and stuff like that. I also, we've had so many new viewers recently that we just want to say this is a very, like, pleasant, welcoming space. We want it to be pleasant and welcoming. Um, everybody who is not a bigot, welcome here. So, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> welcome into the community. Stop posting dumb shit in the chat and have a nice day. <laughs> uh, thank you, MCE, for coming along and, and doing this episode. It was incredibly good to get your 100 accurate and knowledgeable and not at all troll insight into our power rankings and various other discussions yeah it was i mean i've always watched you guys and i've had a good time so it was a pleasure coming on uh i've interacted with a couple of you guys separately so uh, definitely thanks for having me it was a great time and uh hope to come back someday yeah, yeah thanks for coming it. on and where where can people find you in until then obviously you guys will be um, playing at lcq <laughs> Sorry, my bad, my bad. This is like the third time he has been like. I'm just trying to dig you, up trauma. Fuck you. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, yeah, like we, there's some things coming up. We have LCQ, we have things like that. Uh, I've been streaming a little more because uh, I didn't qualify for Tokyo. Thanks, man. Um, but MCE underscore underscore is my uh, Twitch. I am just as unhinged all the time, probably a little more on my own. <laughs> but uh, or my Twitter, which is linked down below, Matthew C. Elmore. Uh, it's been a fun time coming to this game and interacting with everyone and, you know, being included. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's where you're, you'll find me. Uh, we love all the support. Please make me more wingman signs. I'll show you the wall in the uh, practice room that uh, we hang all our signs up. So uh, <laughs> it's been a really cool experience, especially going from the, you know, most hated person in franchising to uh, where we are uh, like now. So. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for joining us as well for episode 137. Uh, when we go to Tokyo, obviously, as usual, our episodes will be less often uh, just because, you know, we're not available all the time, but we'll still try to make some of them work in some of our off days. I can't promise anything, but we'll probably be able to fit one, possibly two in as we've done previously. But again, no promises. Just watch out for it. Hit the little bell. You'll get notified for whenever the days and times and things are because they'll be a little non-standard. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.